weigh the same. What do you weigh? Wait, on the count of three, let's say it. Ready? One, two, three. 240. Skinny. Skinny. <laughs> to just trish today we have a most amazing guest the tallest handsome strappiest man i've ever seen leo skeppy <laughs> what does strappiest mean um like strappy like strappy like guest on like i'm strappy you would be a good guest on i don't get it but work okay wait i don't know either i just know people say like they're big and strappy they're like okay. a strappy like strappingly handsome maybe i don't oh, know thank you i know you're so young i forget oh my god it's crazy i think i'm everybody's age i think i'm your age but i'm like wow it's like you're 25 it's so young i feel like you are though okay i'll take it me too you i feel vibe. like yeah with tiktok i feel like i'm in that group and i'm just like wow no actually i'm actually so old and when i say stuff like strappy i'm like oh i don't know maybe it's strapping and maybe i'm saying it wrong do you know what strapping is like I'm not a, a lesbian. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we're already getting canceled. Can we talk like this or no? You can talk however you want. Yeah. <laughs> you're like you're getting canceled, not me. <laughs> yeah, but you you don't ever get canceled. Well, you described yourself as like you said you're like you're like confident, you're like loud, and you said you're problematic. But I was like I saw that in a podcast, and I was like, but I don't think you're problematic at all. That I'm was not. a direct quote. I have the direct quote actually because I didn't want to misquote you. And you said that you were like I am oh very outspoken, very confident, and problematic. That's how you just described yourself problematic but the way that i address a problem or a situation is like no rebuttal there's like i make the point and it's solid and it's like oh, fuck, like you can't argue it that's why i don't have I was oh. talk, we were talking like shit before we started <laughs> and i was like you can't like I can't have public beef like you can't argue with me because I'm going to dead the point where you can't fight it. Well, and that's even more reason why you should because if you always win, then you'll never look bad. Like me, <laughs> I have public beef and I'm always on the wrong side because I don't know how to articulate myself <laughs> or me. I'm just in the wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my number, call me. Oh my God. Like Leo. But... Call me in your earpiece. Like, <laughs> you guys. I never know. I know. Whenever I'm in public beef, I always lose because I'm just like always saying the wrong thing. But you think you're always in the right with your beef. No, I can address when I'm wrong. But, okay. like, I stand so strong in the right and can explain it in a way where, like, I'm going to knock you in the head with it and you can be like, damn. Yeah. People – but you have that air about you anyways. People just, like, like you. You could say – because your Thank you. podcast is, like, very – like, even when I watch it, it's very, like – um What's the word? Like a trainer that yells at you. You're yeah. like that person, you know, where you're like, if you lack self-discipline, you're ugly. And I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> so when I saw you, we came in today and I had to admit that I just went to Taco Bell and I was like, I have no self-discipline. Like, don't even. And you're like, <laughs> and what did you say to me? I love Taco Bell. You, you always say in all your TikToks, you're like, I eat healthy. I'm having cucumbers and mayonnaise. Like you're always talking about eating healthy. Yeah. But you never talk about that you eat bad. Occasionally. Is that like a secret that people don't know because it ruins your image? It ruins your brand? No. Like I eat very clean all the time. Like yeah. I do like eat shit. And like when I have dessert somewhere, I'll like post it. I'm like, it's cute. Look. Oh, okay, okay. Like I eat normal, just not like all the time. What is like a day of eating look like to you? Like do you eat constantly throughout the day? Are Hell. you intermittent fasting? <laughs> Wait, what? Really? Is it really? Not really. It's like just very clean things. Mm -hmm. Like fish, eggs, rice, potatoes, like kind of boring wait potatoes yeah i always thought potatoes made you fat like white potatoes sweet potatoes no wait white potatoes like you can make mashed potatoes yeah no and like i put it you cut it up put them in the air fryer it's like a french fry wait what and it's healthy yeah oh my god i didn't know this i always thought potatoes were like the enemy <laughs> oh my gosh that's so cool because potatoes are my weakness potatoes and pasta do you eat pasta at all yeah really zucchini uh -huh. pasta or regular pasta Both. Okay, so if you guys don't know, Leo, you yours is like a pod. It's a podcast. Just got into food. I know, sorry, I know. People are probably like, "Wait, what?" You lost a lot of weight, right? Mm -hmm. That's okay. So just so you know, why I'm asking because usually I don't grill my guests. So I'm like, "Do you eat healthy or something?" Grill like me that? on anything. Okay, <laughs> like a chicken because <laughs> that's healthy. <laughs> um, no, it's interesting. No, so you would you consider your show? It's a podcast. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you just don't have a microphone. I always think like if you don't have a like a microphone in front of you, it's like not a podcast. But yours is more my like my mic's like to the corner. It's like on the oh. little desk thing. Okay, I always thought because you know people always like see the microphone, so I'm always like, if yeah. I can't see the microphone. I don't have one of these. Oh, why don't you put it in frame? Because so like, I don't you're... want it blocking my like chick. Because I flail my arms a lot, and oh. I'll whack that mother. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that's why. That's I get interesting. very into it, but like my podcast yeah. is very like you said, trainer yelling at you, but it's more like mental health related. But it's like I'm 
I'm yelling at the voices in you that are hurting you and making fun of you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like teaching you how to quiet them. And I'm like fighting for you. Like I can say the most outlandish things and things people will be like triggered by a lot. But you know, my intent is nothing but like love for you and wanting like the best for you. Right. So they're like disarmed. They're not like, okay, he's not attacking me. He's like fighting for me. And it's like coming from a place where you're like, I've been there. Like you've already like, you've like, I've hated myself. I've had like low self-worth. So I think that's why I like it too. Because normally I'd be like, oh my gosh, this is like so like aggressive. But I think because like you've been there. But I've never seen photos of you fat. You talk about being fat, but have Mm -hmm. you posted them anywhere? Not really. Can you send it to us so we can insert? Because I want to see what your version of fat is. Because I was like, I have a hard time believing you were fat. Because even when you were like puffier, when you like, when you started, I was like, okay, you're not like fat. I was never, like, crazy, like, fat, fat, but, like, I just was, like, big. But I, I, me and my family hold weight very weird. Like, we don't look, we get, like, solid fat. It's, like, it's, like, you just fill Uh, us up with air and we're, like, uh, like, there's no, like, jiggle, shake, move. It's, mm. like, you're just, like, fucking swollen. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. Which is a good fat, honestly. That's like a good. It's hell though. You didn't like it at all. No. Cause you said you were like not happy. Cause I'm like at the stage where I'm like kind of fat and happy. Like, of course I'd want to be skinny. Like, oh my God, to be hundred pounds. Yes. That's my dream. <laughs> but I'm like kind of so happy right now. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to like not eat cause I love food. But I mean, we'll get into that, but you weren't happy at all. There wasn't like, you had no confidence. Cause I feel like you're someone who'd have confidence even if you are like a bigger. Yeah. I didn't have as much confidence and I just felt very bad about myself. And like mm. the whole, it's like the mental hell of like day to day. Every move you make, everything you do, the way you sit, the way you're like conscious of how your shirt's falling. Like Mm -hmm. for me to wear tight things, I never would have before. But like always moving your shirt, changing it. Like when you get dressed in the morning, Mm -hmm. it's like the mental hell of just like everything you do. Like I hated that. Yeah. And people don't talk about that. No, that's true. Some people are okay with it. But like I personally, like I hated it. Yeah, I think there's, like, a difference between being, like, okay with it and then it's, like, but it is uncomfortable. Like, it would be so Uh nice to not have to, like, you know, adjust and, oh, which way am I sitting? Yeah, no, it definitely is. I think every bigger person feels that to some degree. But It's uncomfortable all the time. Yeah. So when you're alone, you're good. (laughs) So when you're alone, you're fine? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Were you still, like, were you hooking up? Were you still, like, dating people or were you just, like, that self-conscious where you, like, weren't dating people at that? Not really. Okay. Like, I'm very selective with, like who gets access to me. Like I've been single for three years. Oh my gosh. That's wild. You're 25. So since you're 22, Mm -hmm. which is crazy. And how long have you been on TikTok for? Like two years, two and a half, maybe. Oh my, did you start doing quarantine? Right at the end of it. Oh really? So during 2020, when everyone was on lockdown, what were you doing? Like right at the beginning, like March, 2020, what was like your life? Like you're a nurse. Wait, what? (laughs) Were you like, (laughs) my life was not good. I was partying all the time. Like, Doing Molly every weekend. Oh. And like, I always say like dealing cards. Okay. But like, I was dealing. Wait, Because like a lot of shit happened with like nursing and it was like, I realized you make way more money over here and it was just like a shit show. My life was not good. Have you talked about this before? I feel like I've researched so much I never heard about you dealing cards. Mm-hmm. What? Okay, this is like a real life Breaking Bad. So <laughs> you're, you're, so you were a nurse for how long? Three years. Like two and a half, three. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you go, so you have to go to nursing school for that. So you got what, an RN or a surgeon? Yeah, okay. So, you, oh wow. So you're nursing, and then what is the flip? Like, where are you like, okay, now it's time to become Breaking Bad? Um, It was more of like someone submitted false claims against me, uh, like to the Florida Board of Nursing against my license, and they launched an investigation. No. And it like fully fucked me for like six months while they were investigating it. Because the claims that they made, like, they were wealthy and they paid a lot of people to, like, back them up and, like, threaten to sue the company I worked for and all of this and that. So they act, they asked me to just go inactive while the investigation was on. And then after the investigation, after six months, they were like, oh, we found nothing. You're good. What? But, like, I had to figure out how to survive. Like You were on suspension for six months. Not suspension, but it was like, you can work, but the company I was with was so scared of getting sued. They were like, please just go inactive. We're not going to fire you, but just voluntarily go inactive because we we don't want him like trying to sue us and like do all this and that. What? Like it was just nuts. Why? Do you know why, why they targeted you? It was an ex. No. Yeah. Oh my. My first relationship. Oh my God. So first and only relationship. Cause you said you've been single for like three years. Yeah. What are you going to do? What are you like? Do you, how do you live your life? How do you like go on? Vibe it out. <laughs> he should be scared of you though. Like your stature alone. Like, is he a big guy too? No, but he's just got the money and like the wealth and stuff. Yeah. But now I do too. So let's fuck around and find yeah. out. I make more than him now. No way. So you can, so you could almost hire a private investigator to like track him and scare him and stuff like that. I could like, he made false like 
claims against me and sued me like multiple times and I didn't have money so I had to represent myself Mm. so I had to just go to court and like wing the shit and I did it and won wow but like now that I have the money it's like you know let's not go dick to dick yeah let's not try and play who's is bigger because Mm. I'm gonna win would you ever counter sue him would you ever do anything now he it's at a point now where like he hasn't done anything and he's so like gone yeah and like I've exposed a lot Mm -hmm. online so like i'm just sitting here waiting minding my business and as soon as you want to try something start something sue i'll bury you under the name that you made for yourself like because everybody wants to know who it is who it is who it is Mm -hmm. so it's like you're silent and you know like a little like what is it called like a little hedgehog as soon as you pop your little head up i'm stabbing it like my my following will come down on you yeah no for sure plus i'll sue you separately right you have the money you have the following (laughs) You have the like, muscle. <laughs> this is the best comeback story. It's amazing. Ever. So you feel secure. You feel like good oh, about yeah. it. Yeah, you feel like. And mentally, he can't, like, you can't mess with me anymore the way he used to. So, well, like, I'm mentally so strong. I can't, you can't, like, scare me. What, how did, how did that change from 21 to, like, only 25? That's only four years. How did you, like, build the strength mentally? With what? Just, like, if you said, like, back in 20, like, when he was dating you, doing all this, he was able to, like, control you and destroy you, like, mentally. How did you get stronger now where it doesn't affect you mentally and it's not, like, hurting your mental health? Kind of, like, choosing my consequences Mm -hmm. and, like, not hiding, but also being able to, like, I saw how resourceful I can be. Mm -hmm. So, like, when my nursing thing happened, I'm, like, I found a way to make it. And then I've, like, made it so far, like, to where I am now. I'm resourceful as fuck. I can rely on myself to figure anything out. Mm-hmm. I no longer question like my ability to handle things and get through anything. Right. So like it was just a matter of going through hell and then getting out of it and showing myself I could do it. But also like the day to day when someone's like messing with you, like you know that from all like the suits you've been in, all the drama you've had. Mm-hmm. It's like just the day to day, what you wake up and deal with and you wake up and you're like, I wish I didn't. Yeah. Like that's... Dealing with that is a separate conversation. Just because you're in it and so being removed from it, you were just able to like build like strength up from that and just being like not involved. Kind of. But like it was still a lot like after. Because you talk about like not – you never really found therapy worked for you. So that's mm-hmm. why I'm like curious to see what the work is that you did because a lot of people be like, I went to therapy and I got help with it. So it's like you were just like – were you just like reading books? Were you watching videos? Were you watching own motivational people like yourself? Mm-hmm. I watched like every – YouTube person you can find. That's how I know who's good and who's not. And I talk shit openly. <laughs> who's the good ones? I love Teal Swan. Okay. I haven't ever heard any of these people. That's another good one. I want to, though. Teal Swan, I love her. I'm going to her event Saturday in LA. Oh my you gosh. Go? Uh, yeah, I'll literally buy uh, yeah. you a ticket. Wait, wait. <laughs> Where is it? I mean, I want to. What is it? So is it like a it's Tony like, Robbins thing where it's like a big convention? Kind of. Okay. And they just, and what is it? They just like talk at, like give you motivational speaking, like. Kind of, but like she'll, she's. Allegedly, like, very spiritually in tune and is, like, clairvoyant, extrasensory, can, like, oh. see energies, feel energies, like, see consciousness and, like, see things like a medium. Okay, I love that. But, like, deeper. Mm-hmm. So, like, she's able to, like, access knowledge and things that, like, most people don't. Like, we don't know if it's true or not, but some of the perspectives she's been able to access and then shared have helped me a lot. And that's like the most important thing if you like get something from it anyways. Yeah. yeah. So that's interesting. So, cause I had read somewhere that like, cause I didn't think you were like spiritual. Cause I know, I think I saw you talking about manifestation, how you didn't think it was real. And then you started journaling and now you think it's real. So do you consider yourself to be like spiritual as well? Like get into like oh, yeah. the subconscious. Interesting. See, I feel like maybe, I, cause I watch all your things and I feel like you don't talk about that a lot. Like I feel like <laughs> you don't talk about like the spirituality of it, which I wouldn't think you would be cause you're so you know, like you, you know, I just, interesting. So what, what got you on that path? Were you always like that? Did you? No. So it was this Teal Swanson, the one who did <laughs> no, it? No, no, no. Okay. It was like a lot of things, just like the whole growing up, like religious and my grandmother was a nun and she's a f- quack. No. So like I grew up like with that kind of Christian beginning with like my family. And then like, that was my mom's side of the family. My dad's side of the family is Albanian. So they were like more Muslim related oh, beliefs. Okay. So, like, I saw both sides, and it's, like, when I was going through, like, the worst of the worst, it was, like, anything I asked for or, like, prayed to or begged, nothing came, nothing helped, nothing fixed it. Mm. And then I got to a point where I was, like, praying to the devil. I was, like, if this shit is real, like, they're not answering, f*** them. Like, you help me then. And Wow. Like, I got that bad. And it was silent. On both ends. Both. Up and down. So I was, like, 
Oh, well, damn. <laughs> You're like, okay, none of it's real. <laughs> <laughs> like the typical things of like, this is just my own experience. I don't mm-hmm. know if it's real or not. Mm-hmm. I might die and eat my words and be sent to hell for being gay. Who knows? Yeah, right. <laughs> but I found like spirituality. I don't believe that. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I don't either. <laughs> That'd be wild. Like, send me to hell. And we're all a little gay, so I think we'd all be in hell. <laughs> like, everyone's a little gay. <laughs> no, where was I even? I don't know where we're going. So with this. you spiritual, like we you said, you grew up Christian, you didn't know heaven or hell, and now you're like, I'm trying to figure out where you got the spiritual path of it all. Yeah, it kind of like hit where like nothing worked, and then I started tapping into my emotions, because like I didn't cry for like seven or eight years. Wow. And I was like, something's wrong. Like I only felt pissed off or happy but you never cried i never cried i never felt anything like terrible things would happen to me and i wouldn't get upset Hmm. but i was like i started going to therapy because when i was like 19 i was like i don't feel things like i don't feel anything Mm -hmm. and then i reconnected to my emotions and then it like reconnected me to my intuition and it's like i just started understanding things and knowing things i wasn't supposed to know Mm -hmm. and it's like the more you tap into like your higher self and like spirit guides and like all the spirituality aspect just unfolds. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there's, it's undeniable what I've experienced, but like, it's not typical. Like that's why I don't talk about it a lot because it's not like the popular opinion and it's not based off of like a book or like anything proven or like long held beliefs from like a lot of people. It's like what I've experienced is what I believe. So suck it. (laughs) The name for your book. <laughs> but manifestation, like my whole, I, manifestation is absolutely real. Okay, absolutely. so you do believe in the manifestation. Absolutely. Okay, yes, I like agree. Like law of attraction, law of mirroring, like I believe in all of it. Yeah. But like the whole manifestation where people talk about, oh, like get a crystal and just write down what you want to happen and like yeah. it's going to happen. Yeah, you don't, we don't. No, like, girl. Wait, like, so what do you do that's different? You have to move your ass. Like you have to like, whenever you, like this is how I do it. Like <laughs> yeah. whenever I ask for something or write something down, I will pay attention to any new thought or idea I get Mm -hmm. and then follow it. So like if I randomly am driving like the next day and I get a random urge to like go down a certain road, I go. Oh. And it's like, you'll find synchronicities, you'll find like numbers, you'll find things that like resonate with you. And it's like, you just have to, you have to get in tune with like your thoughts and like notice the new ideas and that's where it's going to lead you. It's not like you just sit in your room, say you want a million dollars and it's just going to fall out of your ass. Right. Yeah. That's what's promoted a lot. It's like your thoughts create your reality. No, babe. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> or they can create like your path because you always think right. I want to win a million dollars or something. It's like, okay, well, there's a path and sometimes it's a different path. Yeah. I always think mine's coming through the lottery, but then I'm like, oh, this worked out better and I also got a million dollars this way. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. When you first tapped into it and you say it's like not typical, were you like, how were you tapping into it? Were you just like silent, like, you know, meditation style or like, how are you tapping in? I can't meditate. You can't meditate. I fall asleep. I love meditating. <laughs> Wait, so I want to know how you get in there then. How would people, how do people, because a lot of people say that. They're like, I can't meditate. Like, I, you know, whatever. And I get that. So how do you tap in to the higher being early on? Like, like, how do you do it? I just kind of started to, it's like gaining self-awareness and like gaining a better understanding of everything. Mm-hmm. So like if I felt a certain way, I literally do this to this day. Like I'll pin to paper and I'll just write out how I'm feeling, the way I'm looking at it. And then like how it makes sense. Or how it doesn't make sense. And then I just like try to understand my emotions at every level from every angle. And it opens you up to all these new perspectives. And you like your brain just kind of unlocks and you see things a lot different. And you see like all the pot- like possibilities and potentials and like how it flips and how you're not always right. And mm-hmm. how like this, pos- this perspective will make you feel this. So if you want to feel something different, like switch to perspective. But you have to see why you're tied to that one before you try and flip. Right. It's, it's, it's so hard to explain, but I can show you how to do it. It's just like, yeah, to explain it out. If you brought something up and like, we actually, like I used to coach people a lot on this, like life coach. Oh, you did? Yeah. So like, if you tell me something, I will see it like unfold. Like if I tell you what, like if I tell you like one of my dreams or something like that, or my manifestations. Not your dreams, like something that you're dealing with feeling or like you need help with. It'll just kind of like unfold. And do you have to like get to know the person? Like if I told you right now, it's like, oh God, I have a really horrible problem spending money. Like I'm always down to zero every month on my bank account. Like what, like, is that like a thing that you would see unfold? Yeah. And what would you see? Yeah, like I'm going to have to ask you a lot of questions. Is this something you want to go into? Okay. No, I think we can. Yeah, actually. Because <laughs> I love your spending ones. I love your, you do a lot of talks on spending. Because one of my things, I'm not down to zero every month, but I do spend way too much money and I've always spent way too much money and it's just like how it's kind of like all your videos like the eating the self like what you say makes sense but it like doesn't click so what do you say to people who are like yeah this makes sense but it doesn't it doesn't click like I can't it doesn't help me change who I am or change what I'm doing wrong what for instance click? give me an example for you um just like 
the uh, your video, the lack of self discipline. You know, you're like you have to like you know respect yourself and like anyways when you tell like oh people will respect you more if you like look better and I agree with that too. Everyone's so fat phobic. If you're skinny, like they're just gonna respect you more. But for me, there's no like what's the thing to like change? Like how do you get to actually because you're like you can change yourself. You know, change yourself and it's like but I can't. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, I, but I can't. If I could, I would, but I can't. I still spend too much and I still eat too much. Wait, why do you think you can't? I don't know. Because <laughs> I just can't. It's so weird. I think the biggest thing for you is like being aware that like every action you take is a choice. So like that's one thing that yeah. I struggle with with binge eating. Like I used to binge eat really bad. And it's like I would feel certain things and I would just want to eat. And I'm like, I can't stop. Like I just have to do it. Yeah, And that's it was how I just feel. a matter of like practicing like – Whenever I'm about to binge, like, be like, I'm choosing this Mm -hmm. instead of like, oh, I can't stop or I can't not do it. Or like if you're eating and you're like, I can stop right now. I'm going to choose to keep going. It's like just seeing that you are in control. Because like I used to convince myself I wasn't in control a lot. Yeah. Like everything's a choice. Like I, you can't discount like the feelings of like how overwhelmed you are with the emotion of like, this is why I want this comfort. Mm -hmm. It's like drug addicts or like people that binge eat like I used to. Like, you have these emotions and you feel so run by it. But, like, even though you feel this way, you are still in control. It doesn't feel like it. But just, like, reminding myself of that broke me free from a lot. How would how? How does – because I, I, I totally follow that logic. How do you – how does that help you stop binging then? It's just – it started of, like, just telling myself I'm – aware of the control I have like I didn't change anything about binging for like a few months Mm -hmm. like just reminding myself like I want to binge it's like I'm choosing it then like I'm going to choose to go to the kitchen right now and I'm going to go choose to eat this and it's like if I'm not going to stop it's like I would just say to myself like you can stop right now and I would be like I don't want to and you were fine with it yeah and I just kept going and then it got to a point where I was like Mm. I have to cut the shit and I can't keep telling myself it changed the way I talked to myself Mm -hmm. Where I was like, I'm not powerless to these feelings. I'm not powerless to like what I want to do in the moment. Mm -hmm. It's like, it just makes you aware that it's a choice. It's not a fun one. Right. And it doesn't feel good to remind yourself of that. But like, I didn't change the actual behavior for a while. Just Mm -hmm. like reminding myself I wasn't control and seeing the control I had and just seeing the choices I was making and not just kind of like going into things and just like, I don't know why I do this. Like it just going into it, like it. Made me aware of a lot. Interesting. Because when you said – I know you talked about binging before. I, I, I don't know where it was. It, maybe your podcast or someone else's. And you would say like, oh, fuck it. It doesn't matter. And you'd be like, but it does matter. Like that like, you know, that binge does make a difference. Stuff like that. Because that's how I think too. You know, in the moment you're like, I'm depressed. Life sucks. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to binge. But how – to get rid of that mentality, like how did you do that? How are you just like, okay, actually it does matter. It's weird. But like experiencing the consequence of when I do it. Mm -hmm. So, like, when I would binge eat really bad, like, I would wake up the next day, like, puffy, bloated, feel like shit, Mm -hmm. tired, mood was down, and I would just convince myself, this is just a bad day. And I'm, like, then that's what I'm talking about. Like, you have to see how things make sense. So, like, for me to feel this way right now, what makes sense? How, like, could, what could have caused this? Mm -hmm. And you see that it was the binge eating, so you see the consequence, you feel it, you go through it, you get back, like, your face, you you de-puff that day. And then nighttime comes or like the next day. Sometimes it takes two days. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, I feel better. And then you binge eat again and then you bloat back up. And then it's like you have to see that like this is the consequence and experience it. It's like you're hiding the fact of like, no, I just feel like shit today because I'm sad. Right. No, you feel like shit today because of what you did yesterday. Yeah, the binging. But that was one part of it. But what was the question again? My brain like went two different directions. Um, how how like, you don't, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And you're just like, okay, then you said you switched it to like, no, it actually does matter that you like binge. I got kind of like familiar with numbers and like the eating game mm-hmm. of like calories and all that. Oh, okay. And I'm like, it's a numbers game. Mm-hmm. It's science. So like you, I convinced my, your body can only absorb so much at once. Food or knowledge? Food. <laughs> okay. And knowledge. But like, I would be like, okay, if I eat 10,000 calories tonight, just cause I want to binge, I used to. Yeah, same. Like all the time. Yeah. Like that was my joy. It was my comfort. It was the only thing that made me happy. Can you still do that or no? Still do it? Yeah. I can absolutely still put it We should do the YouTube video to the 10,000 calorie challenge together. I would do it with you. (laughs) Did you purge after binging? Would you just like not eat for a day or two? Yeah. Yeah. So you like feel so sick. I used to do that too. Feel so sick and then you don't eat for like a day and then you binge again or don't eat for a couple days and then you binge and it works sometimes to keep the weight off. Like when I was like smaller, it did work kind of to do that. But did you get any help for that, for your eating disorder or Mm -mm. so everything? I figured it out. 
Wow. <laughs> and just one day, just one day, it just like came to you. I guess that's what I need to know is the click. Like when people are like, you know, like people lose weight. It's like one day it just it clicks, you know, and then you lose the weight. And it's like, wh- where'd that click come from? I'm 35 and it's still not there. Mine never was just a one-time click. Mm-hmm. Like I still deal with it daily. Every day you think about food and your choices. Yeah, like every day mm-hmm. I have to like put effort into not eating a lot of different things. Like I have to like consciously choose to eat what I want to eat like that I know is good for me. It's not like a battle that ever gets done. Like you, food is the one thing you will fight with your entire fucking life. It's not like heroin. You can just quit and live. Yeah. Food you have to have. Yeah. Food addiction is a hard one to explain to people because they're it's, like, just stop eating. And it's like, well. It's, it's way easier. Yeah. Like I used to mukbang binge with you. Really? Yes. Oh, yeah. That makes me feel bad. <laughs> no, I used to love it. I was like, it's not bitch. She gets me. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to get like 10 meals in the, one like, sitting. The little Debbie video you did. Oh. I bought every single box and tried mm, them all with you. The little Debbies are so good. I love a nutty bunny. I eat that Me all day too. long. So good. And the little Cosmic Brownies. Yes. God. Oh my God. I feel bad. In that case, then I feel bad if someone's binging with Because some people like who don't eat, can't eat. I like, okay, it's helping them eat. But then there's people who love to binge too. And they're like, well, Trisha's binging. Let's all binge together. So I always feel a little guilty sometimes for that. No, don't ever feel guilty. No, because you, in... like, you eat fast food and then people are like, oh, you made me want fast food. I'm like, oh my God. I'm not doing a service to anybody by getting McDonald's every day or Taco Bell. It was more for me. I just want to tell you, like, it was more of, like, I – like, we both were in kind of the mindset of, like, I can't stop this thing. This is something that's, like, running me. At least Mm -hmm. I'm not alone in it. Yeah. So that was a very big comfort for me. Hmm. But it's, like, I've flipped a lot. And like I was saying with the whole every single day, it's, like, it's on my mind. Yeah. Some days it's not because I'm busy. But, like, it's so much easier to deal with now and, like, live with. It's not, like, this incessant thing. But – like it is, like it does take effort every day. Mm-hmm. It's not like terrible and I'm not like suffering. I'm fine. If I want to eat shit, I'll eat it. Okay. So you really don't think your diet's like hell. When I'm like, what do you eat every day? You're like, oh, it's hell. No. Okay. So you I enjoy. I eat a lot though. I eat all day. Like that's what I'm saying. It's hell. Like yeah. I eat like five, six meals a day. Sounds like Like great. I eat a lot. I'm six foot seven. I want to keep my muscle. I have to eat. People You're don't tall realize too, that. which is great. Yeah. People think I just eat like a little salad and some water and I'm like. Well, that's what you show on TikTok is your little cucumber salad, which I want to try, but it also <laughs> looks like good. a snack. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> you don't I, like sauces though, so you're not going to like Greek it. I love Greek yogurt, but you lose me at the mayonnaise and the dill and all that. I'm just like. Uh, there's uh, no mayonnaise. It was just sour cream. Oh, that, oh, it's kind of the same to me. All that is like the same texture and I just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always see it. I'm like, ooh, I want to try it though. I see everyone doing it. Did you start that or was that on TikTok? That I tried? saw some girl make it and then she put like a bunch of like unhealthy, not unhealthy stuff, but like high calorie stuff in it. So I made like a skinny version. Oh. That's one thing I do a lot is like make a skinny version of things. So like really? you asked me if I eat pasta. Yeah. I cut pasta all the time. How do you make it skinny? But like the carb smart, like low calorie butter, throw that in there, uh-huh. fat free cheese, low fat sour cream, and it makes it like an Alfredo. Mm. And then like popcorn seasoning, the cheese, throw that cheese seasoning in there. But with regular pasta, like Barilla? Yes. Really? And it, you get the sensation of like eating like Aww. real pasta. Like you can, you know, it tastes a little different. But yeah. Like if you season it right and do it, it gives you the same. Mm. And I'll eat like a ton of that. Really? And it's not bad. But you're also tall and you work out. I think yeah. if I was six seven, then I could eat pasta <laughs> and sour cream. <laughs> but people think I don't eat a lot. I'm like, I eat constantly. Oh my gosh. You're so lucky. That's the best. I know because everyone does intermittent fasting now. And I'm just like, gosh, do we all have to do that? Baby, it's no. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I do feel that. like that. I've done that before, and it's like that's hell. That's torture. Yeah. What about this like Ozempic stuff? Do you ever take any stuff like that? I would love to. You never have. No. Because you don't want to lose weight. You're trying to like keep your. Build. I want to keep the muscle. Like the only thing I've yeah. done is Anavar, which is like a minor little steroid that like helps you cut weight and put on muscle at the same time. Okay. But it's like the most. It's like the least potent thing you can do. Right. Like it's barely considered a steroid, and it's like mainly for girls. Oh, really? But I oh. did that for like four weeks, like last year, not last year, like a, last May, like this May that just passed. Mm-hmm. It built your muscle? Like a little. It wasn't nothing crazy, but it like hurt mm. my stomach so bad I was done. Yeah. That's what I'm scared of with these things. I know well, it's like, like bad to be fat, but I'm scared to do those things too. Ozempic? Like it makes yeah. you disgusted by food. That's what everyone says. And that's like my biggest fear because that's like my joy in life is food. Same. Like I, I have to so eat excited. a lot to maintain. Oh, right. So I would so. just be a little stick. Yeah, I think that does what it does. It kind of just shrivels you more. And people look great on Ozempic. Like, I, that's why I want to take it. But, yeah, it kind of scares me. To not be excited about food, that's, like, the only thing I look forward to in life. It's mm. just like, oh, pasta at night, you know. My husband's an amazing <laughs> cook. He makes, like, lasagna and stuff. Oh, it's like, and it's crazy to alter it forever that you never think about food that way. Like, that's so crazy to me, like, how that works. It's not forever. Like, it's just while you're on it. Like, my friend who's oh. on it for, like, a few months watched, like, a Pizza Hut commercial. And when they pulled the cheese, she threw up. 
Like it was a cheese pull. No. Like she threw up. Oh, I could never. That's I'm so like, exciting. I love food. Oh, like, what? I didn't know you love food. This is so yes. exciting because when I watch all your stuff, I just assume, oh my God, he just eats clean all the time. Because a lot of people just eat clean all the time. Do you have a cheat day? Like The Rock would have like one cheat day a week. No, I just kind of like cheat when I want. Okay. Do you like go, what's your cheat meal? Catch steak. That's your cheat meal. I feel like that's healthy. <laughs> a steak? I'm like, oh, I'm it healthy is, when I'm eating filet. That, there's this, oh my God, people are going to get mad, but shut up. There's this. <laughs> baked potato and it's like double baked potato like it's a i don't know what they do to it but it's like oh. they like cut out the inside mm-hmm. do something to it put cheese in it and then like put it back yes. in and make it like a uh. potato and they put caviar and like some kind of cream Ooh. on it it's like 80 dollars. oh because the caviar <laughs> for a baked potato oh but my. it's so <laughs> a twice baked potato caviar that's bo- yes. at the catch yeah catch steak oh my god wait is that different than catch yeah Oh, where's catch steak? Catch is like fish and then catch steak. It's like a mile away, I think. Oh, okay. But like I'll eat that. I'll eat the mac and cheese. Like I'll just Mm. eat literally whatever I want. But like I do keep in mind certain things. Like when the steak comes out, I scoop the butter off. Okay. Like it's just like it already tastes good. Like for what? Yeah. But like my thing is like I like to get creative. When I like see something and I'm like, I want to eat that. How can I like. Make it healthy. Make it a little bit better. What about like. Yeah. Give me an example of something that you made healthier. Like pasta. Okay, like, that. I don't want one serving. Right. I want four. I know. The portion control is where it gets me, too. So I'm like, I if I can that. make it skinnier, I can eat, like, three servings. Right. Then but, rather... like, serving sizes for me, because I'm 6'7", like, a bowl of cereal, half a cup of cereal. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do with that. I know. Why I'm not a so... bird. <laughs> I know. You said the ramen that was – you said ramens were two servings for one. And I was yes. like, that's wild. Like, I could eat three ramen. I put all of that in one. I literally used to eat two packs uh, when I was a kid as a snack. Yeah. That's what I thought, too. When you said it was two <laughs> servings, I was like, no way. There's no – even mac and cheese. We could put three mac and cheese boxes in there. It's like, that's what you – that's – I whoever made up these rules must have been, like, archaic, like, from the 50s or something. Because we're bigger them. now. We need more food in us to, like, sustain, you know, sustain – Substain, I don't know. <laughs> like Taco Bell, I love Taco Bell. If That's you ever want to try the Power Bowl, I get the Power Bowl with double steak. What is Power Bowl? It's like just like a little bowl of like beans, cheese, lettuce, meat. It's like rice, and then it's like every. It's like a taco, not a Taco mm-hmm. Bell, like Chipotle bowl. Okay. But like it's a Power Bowl. No carbs. There's like a little rice in it. Okay, which is like fine. Not enough to right? hurt you, but I'll eat like two of those. Like, people don't realize the amount I have to eat. I would love to eat like you for a day for a YouTube video. Just follow your diet. Can we please? <laughs> you follow my diet for a day. I'll follow you. <laughs> we'll go to Taco Bell. I'm like, this is what you're getting. You're eating chips and cheese and a quesadilla. <laughs> Can we please do that? Yeah, that'd be everything. Like, if you go to Chick-fil-A, you'd probably get the grilled chicken bites or something. Wait, wait. <laughs> I'm like... so down. The fact that you love food, I'm just like, yes. I feel like we would, I feel like we would learn a lot from each other. Where, like, you would learn a lot of, like, just little things I substitute, but I eat more than you. Well, I mean, yeah, you're huge. Well, I mean, I'm huge, but you're huge. <laughs> we probably weigh the same. What do you weigh? Wait, on the count I'm of like, three, let's say it. Ready? One, two, three. 245. 240. <laughs> Skinny. Skinny. <laughs> oh, my God. Triggering. You're like all muscle. You're six, seven. <laughs> no, I want to get, like, I want to get, like, uh, what's it called? Well, they suck the fat out. Why can I not think of the Liposuction? Name? Lipo, yeah. I never had it. I mm-hmm. had it once. I, it worked, and then I gained it back. But it snatches you. Where would you want it? On your my waist? stomach. I want to get my hip bones shaved. Oh. That would look nice. I don't know. I don't like, know what I your hip bones... I want my stomach, are. like... Do you go shirtless ever? I don't show my body online, but, like, in real life, I go shirtless places. Okay. Like, Why the not? beach or, like, on a walk. Why not in real life? Online? Because I feel like everyone shows off online. Two reasons. Okay. Like, one is, like, I want to have what I'm saying be taken like serious and people are so stupid they can't Mm -hmm. like separate that Mm -hmm. like when they see like a sex worker or someone who like shows their body Mm -hmm. or like goes for sex appeal they like take what they're saying less serious true so like that aspect but also people have never seen my body so if I ever want to release an OnlyFans, <laughs> I can make millions just off shirtless shit oh my god I'm a man. you're smart would you do that one day if all else fails yeah that's what I did at 32 quarantine happened I'm like all right Time to do a tape. <laughs> Made a lot of money. You can make like four or five million dollars fast. That'd be crazy. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, if I can make a million dollars off some shirtless photos, let's do it. Totally. But I'm saving that. Yeah, for sure. I always say save that route until you're like in your 30s because people will still pay for it. Although, bad baby, she made like 18 million in one month. Did you see that? In one month. Oh, 
crazy. Oh, that says a lot about those people. I'm like, that's okay, like she just turned 18. Maybe. Yeah, it's like, okay, ooh, that's a little ick. Do you have this thing like when you see someone or get to know someone, they're that age forever in your head? Like, Bad Baby is always 14 in my head. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is. Uh, well, I mean, I guess when she grows up, I'll see it differently. It's like JoJo or, you know, those kind of people. You just see them as very Ooh. young. JoJo, see what? You don't know JoJo? Girl, I'm being shady. Oh. <laughs> do, you have, do you have beef? <laughs> no, but you do. Which, oh, I do. And now I, do I have, have beef. beef. Now I have beef you. with no one. Because you're talking about, like, Charlie doing that. I actually love her. Like, I always had one side of beef with people, and now I have to, like, make amends to that. And they're probably like, stop. <laughs> it's too little, too late. I know. I used to have beef with so many people. I know you talk about never having public beef with people, and I think that's so smart of you because you're just so liked, and, like, people like you no matter what. You're, like, respect all stuff like that. So once you start public beef, then people will get you different. They think of you as, like, drama and all stuff yeah. like that. But you'd have no problem. You see, you're like, I could hold my own with public beef. I think it's, like, smart. I think your path is smart, not showing your body. Although you show it. You can see your body I give a little thing. sex appeal. I get your attention. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, he he knows things too. Right. I love smart. the mind. Yeah, the intellectual part. Oh, he's <laughs> actually like you. Because no one looks like you online. You really are a six, seven in real life. You are huge. You look like a model. Wait, Thank but you, you never modeled, you said. You never done runway work. You've been to Fashion Week with YSL, but yeah. that was just to like go. Yeah. Go oh and win God. and be seen. I know. I love it. I think that's everything. How do people get invited to these things? I always ask. I mean, how do people go to Fashion Week? A lot of people pay for PR. Okay. But you I don't. I don't. I just, just have a invited? good team. <laughs> Damn. You got it like that. I feel like I could pay and I still wouldn't get invited because you know you can pay for PR and they do nothing for you. <laughs> like the PR thing because they've I've considered like looking into it mm-hmm. and like doing it because like I want to be like recognized by Versace so bad. <laughs> and like there's certain brands I just like love and I'm like I either want free shit like PR like yeah. gift me things, mm-hmm. dress me for my tour, dress me for my events, oh. like dress me for shit at yeah. least or like go to events. And, like, be seen, like, maybe model Wednesday. And maybe that's coming. You would be such – I mean, I'm surprised Versace hasn't reached out to you. Like, Me I feel too. like they are – that's so – you're a brand, the black and gold, which is everything. Is your bed Versace? I saw you just got it, like, a black and gold bed. Oh, that mm-hmm. just looks like it. Yeah. It's so cool. Just Where did the gold. black and gold come from, the love of it? My family. Like, we all have always just done black and gold. Are you – you're Albanian on your dad's side. What's your mom? American. But kind oh. of, like, some – she's, like, some kind of part, like, Indian, I think. Okay. But like a little bit. Okay. So I'll, so wait, your dad was, were you born here though? Mm -hmm. And your dad was born in Albania. Have you been to Albania? No. Do you talk about being Albanian? Here and there. Okay. But like, it's not accepted to be gay and be Albanian. So I kind of like. Oh, really? Yeah. What does that mean? Like if you were to go over there, they like would turn you around. Like Dubai, they like don't let you, they like turn you around. I don't know what would happen. Yeah. But you're not trying to find out. That's Mm -hmm. crazy. Does your, but your family's fine. They're accepting. Yeah. Okay. Did it take them a while? Okay. When you first came out, no? My dad's side, not really. Mm, because they're the Albanian side. Yeah. Oh. My sister and my mom were cool with it. How did it make you feel? What? When you're like Albanian side and accept it. Infected. Like your dad's side. Huh? Accept it. In- oh, in- infected. Oh, and like, you felt infected. Oh, infected shit. and like defective. Like I felt like I just have this thing that like people are turning against me for. And it's mm. like this thing is the reason I'm losing all these people. How did you do it? You just one day was like, I got to just tell them. I was with, like, I had a boyfriend for mm-hmm. a few months, and then I was playing the whole pronoun game. Mm-hmm. My sister and my mom knew from the beginning. Mm-hmm. But I got to a point where, like, I was just saying, like, she instead of he and things like that. And then it got to a point where, like, I moved in with them, and it was like, I have to just mm. come clean about it. This is your first serious relationship, so in high school you weren't dating boys or anything like that? No. Did you know always, or did you try to fight it for like a minute where you're like, maybe, maybe I'm straight? Like in high school, did you think maybe you were straight, or you knew? I knew. Okay. But I was so, I was literally like tricking myself in my head. Like Mm -hmm. I was trying to find any like explanation that wasn't that I'm actually into guys. Because like Mm -hmm. for me to come out, I never thought I would, ever in my life. I accepted that at like 16. I was like, I will never come out. That's never going to be a thing. Like, I'm never going to own that. Mm. And, like, this idea of, like, what I want my life to be like and what my dad wants my life to be like, I was like, that's going to be it. Mm. And I was like, I had, like, when I came out, I had to, like, put that whole goal and, like, idea for, like, how my life was supposed to be to rest. Like, I had to mourn that. Like, my life will never be like that. And then also mourn, like, my family and stuff. Mm. That's so – it's – it's- Mm. <laughs> I don't want you to cry. No, it makes me sad. I know people who like stay in the closet for that reason. They'll never come out and it's, it makes yeah. me so sad and you have to like live your life for someone else and those people get in a relationship with women and stuff like that and they 
they're just not happy. And it's like not fair. It's definitely not fair to that person, the guy, you know what I mean? It's, oh, so what, so you, then you moved in with this guy, you told your mom and dad, how long did you did it take to tell your dad? Or like you told your mom and sister. Four or five months. Mm-hmm. But the whole thing about me convincing myself, like mm-hmm. I was trying to convince myself I wasn't attracted to guys. So I would be like, oh, like, I just want to look like this guy. Right. Or like, mm-hmm. he's just like, I want to look like this. I want to be this muscular. I want to look like this, like, and have this style. I want to make this amount of money. Like, I convinced myself it was, like, being enamored and not attracted. Mm. And then I finally stepped up to the point where I was, like, I want to these men in, like, a degrading way. <laughs> like, I want to take your masculinity. It's, like, I went from, okay, maybe I want to look like you to, like, okay, I want to take your manlyhood. Like, I want to, like, take that. <laughs> yeah. And I had, like, a weird, like, like obsession it? with that. Like, I okay. want to, like... <laughs> To, like, take this, like, big, strong, manly man and, like, flip him and, like, take away that manhood. Like, I had a weird, like, that's what I'm into. And then I did that for, like, <laughs> a little bit. Like, I was, like, fucking married men oh, with, like, oh, children, like, straight oh, men, wow. like, straight closeted men. Yeah. And, like. That happens so much. They were never going to come out. I was never going to come mm. out. So I was, like, going to feed that little, like, fetish I had. Right. And then I was, like, yeah, you just like fucking boys. <laughs> <laughs> right. How old were you? Were you like 21? How old were you? Like 19, 20? Like how, when? when you're doing this with the married guys? You must have been young. 17 to like <gasps> 20. Wow. And these men have children, so they're obviously way older. And I know, I know, I know so many people in those same situations. And I feel bad for everyone involved. Like, you know, the people that are married and in this situation that don't want it. But then you're kind of the whole thing is so sad. It's so sad. And it still happens in 2023. I think now it's like, I was thinking, oh, gay is like cool. Like everyone, like you, a lot of people want to be gay. You know, they try, you know, you see all the people kind of like, you know, what is it like queer baiting and stuff like that, wearing skirts. And they're like, you know, it's very cool, but it's interesting that so many people still feel that way. They still feel like they can't come out and stuff like that, which is like devastating yeah. really. Do you think now, because you do talk about being gay a lot, because I don't look at it as that like your brand, like your brand to me is the confidence, obviously like mm-hmm. your tour and stuff is like the confidence. Do you ever find yourself like, fighting like gay stereotypes like people look at you and like oh you don't look gay i know you said like straight men like come up and try to fight you sometimes why do you think that is do they know that you're they look at you and they think oh this is like this and then they find out you're gay and they want to fight you or they just think you're like straight and want to fight you i think it's like a dominance thing Mm -hmm. like straight men are just can we like oh i bet i could beat the i bet i could beat the shit out of you or i bet i could take you it's like, I don't think you could take me in that way, but you want to fight? <laughs> Have you gotten into fist fights? Have you gotten into actual fights? My whole life. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, you can't do that now because now you have money. Now you're fav- like you Like, you'll get sued right. now. So you can't. When's the last right. time you fought somebody? <laughs> More recent than I would like to admit, but last November was, like, my last, like, big thing where, like, the internet knew because I got jumped in Berlin and then I stabbed somebody and it was, like, a big thing. Oh, okay. I saw this. Okay. I didn't, well, I didn't see the video. The video's not, because you did, I got like 16 million views, but I couldn't find the video. It was like 26 million views, yeah. Is it still up or they took it down? No, they took it down. Like they let it blow up that high and then took it down like two months later. Who was videoing it? You? No, it wasn't like a video of the fight. It was like me walking back to my hotel room, like with my lip busted, like talking about the fight. Right after you got jumped. Yeah. You're like, let me TikTok this real quick. Wow. Um, What was going through your head in that point where you're like, which I'm not knocking, by the way. I went to mental hospital. I was like filming it. I was like, well, this seems like appropriate to film. I don't know. What was going through your head? You're like, I just got jumped. Let me. Well, they didn't take your phone. No, they didn't take anything. Oh. And I was like, at least, why are you wasting my fucking time? Like, jack my chain. Take my phone. Take my wallet. Like, make it worth this. What? Like, what? So what happened? They're just, they just knocked you out. <laughs> no, they didn't knock you out. Well, knock you out. I don't know. What's the term? <laughs> they wish they did. <laughs> what's, the, what's the term? Thank you. You knocked somebody. <laughs> yeah, like, you like, we just like fought, but. We didn't my fall. mentality, not, not like, yeah. after, like, the whole thing, like, my mentality was, like, we, the reason I think I got jumped, I think it was a setup, because I posted a video on TikTok, like, me and my friend just <gasps> got to Berlin the night before, like, give me recommendations of places to go. <sighs> we went to this club the next night that everybody was talking about, the Matrix, the Matrix, the Matrix, go here, go here. We go there, and out of nowhere, these, like, five guys surround me. <sighs> And then, like, one of them pushed me, and then the other one threw their drink in my face. So I just, like, I'm aware of my surroundings. I saw them all circle me, and I just started swinging. Like, I was just throwing, like, anywhere I could, hitting anybody, everything. Oh, my God. And then I was, like, on the ground with one, and I was, like, beating the shit out of him. And then his friend kicked me in the face. And that's why my lip was, like, I had a full boot mark, like, right here. Oh. Like, it almost broke my nose. Yeah, your face is fine. You went yeah. unscathed, it healed. Mm-hmm. You didn't have to get stitches or anything. No. But also I'm a nurse, so like I had I, I dislocated my pinky 
because I had like a big ring on and I had to like oh. pop it back in. Oh gosh. And, like I checked my nose to make sure it wasn't broken. Yeah. And like I knew my lip was fine. And you were with a friend. Yeah. And your friend got jumped too. So he's in no. this fight with you. Just you. Where'd he go? He yeah. just I mean obviously. I thought he was in it, but he wasn't. So he just kinda like left. Which I mean I guess he, he was did like you. away from it. And then some other dude got into it with him. So he was like fighting with one and I was fighting with five. Oh my gosh. That's wild. Had, did yeah. it, was there any witnesses? Did you was there any charges pressed or anything like that? We took off. Did no one call the cops? The cops were coming as we were leaving. I got called an Uber and we got out of there. Wow. And then so, we changed our flights and left in the morning. Because you were just so shook by it. I was just like, I don't want cops coming. Wait, why? Like, I was like, I don't want to get involved in this shit, be arrested in Germany. Yeah. Oh, my God. So you think, it, I mean, it was a setup. Yeah, that's why they say now to like, I mean, obviously, you know now, but like to not post anything. I mean, then people know where you're at. I don't post anything while I'm there anymore. Yeah. I think Ever. I, that that's the rule. I know a lot of TikTokers' house get like broken into. I saw Jenna Froome. She was like somewhere and she got her house broken into. I mean, that is like a rule of thumb to like not do. But I mean, but you don't know. You think like, especially you, like you always think who's going to jump you. But it is interesting that so many people try to fight you. Mm-hmm. Because you're so big, I would think it's the opposite where people are like, don't mess with him. But because you're so big, it's like they're, like you said, they're insecurity. We're like, let me fight this guy, mm-hmm. which is wild. Have you ever lost a fight? Oh, Yeah. Okay. Like growing up. Yeah. yeah. Like I've been jumped plenty of times. I've gotten my ass beat. But one thing about me is like even if I lose, you still go in a way looking like that. <laughs> because you're also fighting yeah. in there. Okay. So you fight. I've never fought. Like I've never I'll fought. fight until you kill me. Oh like my I will gosh. swing until I knock out or like die. Wow. Well, I'm glad you're not fighting anymore. Because now. I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I miss it every day. No, no, every you don't. Day. <laughs> like my knuckles are like. Oh my gosh. Not- Jeez. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Yeah, you have, have your... stories in here. Yeah. I miss it. No, you don't. You I miss, miss why? Beating the f out of why? people. Why what where did the aggression come from? Where is like, this at? Bullying when I was younger, that's when it started, and it's like I just miss fighting. There's just something about it. What did you get bullied for? Everyone thought I was gay. Ah. Uh, where did you grow up? Pensacola, Florida. And it was looked down upon in Florida. I would think Florida's more open down there. Like they'd be more It's like the right up next to Alabama, where we were. Oh, oh <laughs> right, okay, right, right. okay. So it was not. No one was out. There was no gay kids no. or anything like that. The, all the little hickories over there. Them yeah. was the ones I was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they're are they the ones making fun of you? No. No, it was other people. Okay, yeah. so they were like, "That's so interesting." Why did you think that? Because you, not that there's an acting gay, but there's like kids that you think are flamboyant that like you know get made fun of for being gay, but like you don't come across like that. I now. kind of was when I was like a lot younger. Mm-hmm. And, like, I was always friends with girls, and Mm -hmm. I was never, like, really hooking up or doing anything. So they called you gay because you always hung out with girls? Yeah. Interesting. Did you change your mannerisms? You said you were a little more flamboyant. Did you change, like, how you talked and how you act? Because you have nothing – you have not at all. Like, there's no flamboyancy to you at all. I'll also sit up with you, like, here and there. (laughs) Like, I'll, like – You'll see it in my mannerisms or like if we're talking serious, it'll be, yeah. you won't be able to really tell. But yeah. like if we're like shooting shit, like I'll say something and be like, all right, Gura. Like okay. it'll just like, <laughs> sis, like it'll come out. Yeah, like yeah, I don't yeah. change anything. Yeah. And I didn't like try and change how I am. It's like puberty hit. Yeah. And then like I was around, I was only around women mm-hmm. when I was little. Like only around women. Interesting. And then like when I went through puberty and I was like 15, 16, I met my stepdad who was like hyper masculine crazy and it was my first experience like around like a dude consistently every day Mm -hmm. like my dad i would see here and there Mm -hmm. but like i was around him all the time and like my formative years so like i adopted a lot of like him and like it like molded me but i don't try to be a certain way i just am me right it's just you like it'll come out like the fighting is that from your stepdad like the more just like the I can beat someone. Because if you're around girls, girls are going to be like, no, 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 don't get in a fight. You know what I mean? But a guy would be more like, let's fight him. Let's punch him. Let's, I don't know what guys do. <laughs> yeah. My dad raised me very protective of people I care about. Like my okay. whole family is like that. Like I literally, when I care about you, I will literally do anything to protect you. Oh. Anything. Hmm. So like any threat to you, I'm taking it out. It's wow. like that aspect. It's like, oh, I can beat you up. It's like any threat to something I care about or someone I care about, you're done. Yeah. Like, I'll sacrifice myself to make sure you're not hurt. Wow. But, like, that I already had in me, and the meeting my stepdad was, like, a whole different level. So what would your stepdad do? Was he, like, Fight Club or something? That's how he I imagined. He was the type yeah. that, like, he went to prison for murdering oh my God. a few people. <laughs> what is your life? <laughs> insane. Insane. Like, you need, he... like, a movie. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. 
he went to prison for like murdering some people and like he oh had that God. prison mentality from like a very young age of okay. like disrespect you fight you look at somebody wrong you're hitting them it's like th- he took that violence I already had in me to an extreme and then like ripped me into like a whole different life of it like no laws no rules he was above the law you couldn't catch him like had so many cop friends like was corrupt as fuck oh wow like would get away with anything oh my god that's wild was he like a good one though was he like a like did he have good intentions okay if, when he cared about you <laughs> okay, he had okay, good okay. intentions but like he did a lot of fucked up things to me with the good intention of like i'm preparing you so like one thing he used to do to me and my mom a lot was if i was like going to the grocery store or if i was like going somewhere he would wait in the parking lot until i was like walking back to my car and then like attack me or like choke me out or like start hitting me out of nowhere or like be in the car and like grab me and like knock me out and i would wake up in my car like what the f-? like he would just like what? attack me to teach me how to be aware of my surroundings and like handle a fight like he used to get me drunk and like stand up and like beat the shit out of me Wait. so i could learn how to fight drunk mm. but like that's that hidden intention of like i'm trying to help you but i'm traumatizing the fuck out of you oh my gosh wait what this is sounds <laughs> a little bit like abuse about, or something i haven't talked okay. about that I was like, this sounds like maybe child abuse and you don't There's know so many stories yeah. oh my god <laughs> okay <laughs> wait wow okay and your but mom it taught me just... a lot it taught me a lot Okay, I get that, but, you know, being an abusive relationship could teach you a lot. Like, okay, this is not what I want, but oh, okay. So you think it prepared you in some some way? It did. Okay. Like, now, when I was going through it, I was like, what the hell? But, like, I <laughs> like the hidden intention was, like, he was trying to help, but it was through bad. Is he still around? He's dead. What happened? Can I ask? He got in a motorcycle accident. Oh, okay. And was going, like, 100 mm. miles an hour, mm. and this car pulled out, and he hit it. And he hit it so hard, the car flipped, like, six times. <gasps> And he, like, shot up, like, oh. 50 feet in the air, head came off in his helmet, oh whole ordeal. God, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Are you sure? I feel like, like nothing I... with me anymore. I've been, I've seen it all. But I've experienced it all. How old were you when that happened? Oh, my God. I was 19, I think. 18 or 19, oh I can't remember. God. This is, like, did you cry then? Because I know you said you didn't cry for a few years. You didn't cry. Where do you think that, wow. Did you have emotion? Were you, like, this is sad? Were you relieved? I was relieved because he was, like attacking my mom Ugh. and I got out and like moved in with my dad and like it was at a point mm. where it was like he was coming after me and her and it was like him or us oh my so God. I was like we were me and my mom were both so relieved that he died we didn't want him to die oh right but it was like it's, like, it's a relief you hear people yeah. talk about that oh like I God. still I gotta get into that oh my gosh but like I did cry about it eventually uh, when, but when, when it, it hit me, it was like months later when uh-huh. I was like in therapy, coming to my emotions and shit, and I lost it. What What was the trigger? What turned him on? The tears. I felt invincible, mm-hmm. like with him on my side, and I've never felt more safe in my life, mm-hmm. ever. Like nothing could touch me, wow. and there's nothing I couldn't like face with him. It's like if he was mad at you, you're fucked. But like if you were with him, you were like untouchable. And I've never felt safe like that again, and I never will in my life. Wow. It's almost like you became that person for yourself because you start, you could fight yourself. You could take on five guys. It's like you kind of took on that aspect of like you could protect your mom. You could protect anyone around you, which I feel like you still would and could if mm-hmm. it like happened. Now I've struggled with, I became as close to him for like protecting myself. Like I will go. Like, people don't understand, like, what I'm capable of and, like, how I can switch it off Mm -hmm. and, like, do anything to protect people I care about or myself. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, now I'm at a point I found comfort in that a little bit. And it's, like, I felt safe going around and about life. And then it's, like, now I'm at a point if I get in a fight or if I protect myself, I will go to prison and I'm going to lose everything. Yeah. It's, like, I'm at a a point of, like, are you going to sacrifice your life or are you going to protect yourself? So I'm, like... It's like you have the ability to protect yourself, but your hands are tied. Right. So it's like I don't feel safe. I don't feel – like I will do it, but I know the cost. Yeah. Like I'm throwing my life away. Well, how do you avoid those situations? You just pick and choose. Like you're like, I'm not going to be confrontational. But I guess a lot of this stuff isn't brought on. You didn't bring on the jumping. Mm -mm. Did you get hit by a car too? Yeah. When, was this on TikTok? (laughs) Oh my God. When did this happen? This was my going away dinner when I was leaving Houston. Oh my, wait, so you lived in Houston. When did you go to Houston 
from Florida? May of 2022. Oh, okay. So you're only there for like a year in Houston. Do you move there for any reason? To get the hell out of where I was in Florida. I hated it. Interesting. I wanted okay. a bigger city. Houston's good. Did you like Houston? I miss it every day. Houston's great. I, all my favorite people are from Houston. All like a lot of the glam people, they're from Houston. I love Houston people. They're amazing. But okay, so the car, you got hit by a car at your going away party in Houston. And mm-hmm. did someone film this like on TikTok? Because I thought I saw something like, or I, you can hear you yelling or something in the background after it happened. Yeah. So no one filmed like the actual incident, but like my friends threw me a surprise going away party. Uh-huh. And like I walked in the party not knowing it was like a going away party. I thought we were just having dinner. And, like, they opened the curtains, and everybody was like, surprise. And I was like, this motherfucker just hit me with his car. Oh, that's what it was. I see you angry. I see yeah. you walking in angry. And I, I was covered like, what? in dirt, pissed off. Oh, my. Wait, so someone, <laughs> you're walking. You have, like, you have, like, great luck and terrible luck all at the same time. This is wild. Okay. So how does this happen? Are you on the crosswalk? Who? How did this hit you? How did the car yeah, hit you? Yeah, I was just, like, at the little crosswalk. You know how restaurants are in, like, a shopping complex? Yeah. And it's, like, you have the little, like, walkway, and they have a stop sign. He just didn't stop. And I, when I was walking and I saw him coming a little fast, so, like, I turned and I was, like, he's hitting me. So I jumped so I could, like, land on the hood and, like, not, like, be run over. Oh, my God. And then you just went to the party like nothing. You didn't go to the hospital or anything? No. I tried to beat the fuck out of him. But he wouldn't get out the car. So in this situation when now you're trying to avoid, is that your last incident where you, like, had a – I don't know what these are called. Swings? I knocks. Think so. Okay, so now that happened to you because you're trying to avoid these situations and someone hit you with their car, what well, would you do? I learned control in that moment. Okay. Because, like, I, like, was going to yank him out of the car. Like, old me would have, like, s- smashed his window and pulled him out. Oh, you didn't. But I didn't. Like, I went around to the driver's side door and I was, like, y- I almost yanked the handle off. Okay. But I was, like, trying to get him out. And when he was, like, scared and, like, wouldn't get out, I thought. And I was, like, Leo, you're in public. You don't know who's watching, who's filming. Like, stop. Right. And it, like, made me, like... I stopped for a second and then walked inside. So that's good. So I think now you can you can do those situations. If someone's trying to pick a fight with you, you're just going to mm. walk away. You're not going to like fight. But I leave regretting not tearing somebody the fuck up every time. Really? Like I wish mm. I would have at least like hopped on his windshield and smashed it or like done something. Wait, like but- I have to walk away being the bigger person and just deal with this like – and you don't feel better being that bigger person. Sometimes no. I feel better being the bigger person. When someone comes for me, I'm kind of like, you know what? I'll just leave it. Because I sometimes. love to attack with my words. But I'm like, sometimes I feel better just like, you know what? I'm going to leave it. I'm gonna, And I'll be like, Trisha, you've grown. And I'll be like, thank you. You know? <laughs> so I think I think it should make you feel better when you leave the situation no, being the worse. bigger. Wow. Like I have so many regrets. Like so many times <laughs> I wish I would have just smacked the fuck out of somebody. And I walk away not having done that, and I, like, live with that regret. I wonder what that is. I'm not a psychologist, but there must be some. I have more things to, like, (laughs) deal with than going into that. But, like. You should have a session with Dr. Drew. He might be uh, able to diagnose this. He really, he really can know what's going on in there. That's wild. Yeah. The only thing I worry is now you're, like, famous and rich. I'm just, like, you know, maybe. I'm a cash cow. People are going to try shit. Yeah. They'll try to sue you. If you even touch someone. It's crazy. People, I've seen people, like, get in someone's face and be, like, touch me, touch me, touch me. And it's, like, even if you do, like, a little, like, a little shove. People are like, he shoved me. He whatever. Even like push him away. Even if they're in your space, people will like sue. It's wild. That's my problem. Like with the way my brain is, because my dad always raised me. Like if you're gonna cut, if you're gonna get caught speeding, are you gonna you, like, don't ever get caught for going five over, go a hundred over. Oh wow. If you're gonna go get in trouble, <laughs> make it worth it. So like when I would fight in school, like I would fight. Yeah. Like I'm I'm getting suspended, so I would like pummel the fuck out of people. Oh, wow. And it's like now. I'm like, if I'm in an altercation with somebody or, like, someone's trying to start with me, if I know you're going to sue me, now I'm going to give you something to make sure you can sue oh me Oh, my about. gosh. Okay. Well, like, not- if I'm already going through court, I'm f***ing your no. shit up. I'm going to, like, break your arm so every time you got a shit, you think of me type vibe. Okay. Well, let's not do that anymore. <laughs> We're trying to be Versace model. I know. We're going on tour. Especially Ugh. going on tour now. Okay. You have a tour yeah. coming up, which you just announced, which I was so excited yesterday. I was like, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. We got some tea today. Um, This is very exciting. It's called Confidence Unleashed. Yes. Which which is such a great name. It almost sounds like a Netflix special or something. I love Are you it. gonna film it? Yes, I filmed my first event. The I did LA. like a tester event to like see how it went, uh-huh. and it sold out in forty five minutes. And like the show went so good, everybody was like, "We have to do it again." And my like team made a mini tour, so I'm doing like a West Coast thing, and then it's almost sold out now in like twenty four hours. Oh my god! So like we're gonna extend to way more. 
areas and locations. Oh my gosh! So at your shows, are this like is this like a motivational speaking show? Like, is that what you do? Is it kind of like your podcast, but like live? It's like a live version of my podcast, but it's about confidence. So the whole like, thing. Yeah, like the forty. It's like forty five minutes. Mm-hmm. Of me speaking like a live podcast on confidence, then it's like a big opened up like Q and A. You can ask me anything, and we'll oh, like talk about it. But it's unfiltered, fun. uncensored. Like if we weren't recording right now, the way I'd be talking is way different. What It'd do be you mean? Way you're... more explicit. Oh, interesting. Are you? Because online you're not either. I guess you have to monetize. I, like that's censored. On YouTube. Like on YouTube, I am censored. Really? Okay, so you're like a wild talker. Yeah. Okay. I love that. So that's what your tour is going to be. Yeah. Do you give that warning to people in case they're going to be like, oh my God. Sometimes you like meet people and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so different than they are online. But there's a lot of things. I Like I'm the same. But yeah. like I just get a lot more like, whoa, okay. Like I really can like hit a point if I can talk freely. Right. Like when I just give myself the ability to just like execute this point, don't worry about offending feelings. Don't worry about getting demonetized. Don't worry about being PC. Like when I'm in that room. It's like I just get to like let it – like unleash it and like let it out. Okay. And like the points just hit and I can hit dark things like unaliving mm-hmm. and not have to like tiptoe around YouTube's little fucking little rules. Yeah. It's like, girl, let me just talk freely. Like this is real. Yeah. Like I talk real with no filter. That's the thing. And I feel like more a lot of people don't do that, especially like in, inspirational people. You know, they like to have a little like filter. They, they're so fake. Yeah. All these self-help people <laughs> – Fake as shit. Is there any self help? Do you like Tony Robbins? Kinda. I, you give me his vibe. You give me the vibe. I of do Tony. really like him. I resonate with a lot of what he says, but I don't. I haven't like, like do do like a deep dive in him to know. Yeah, I don't. I don't like listen to him. I listen to Joel Olstein. Do you listen to him? Do you know him? He's from Houston. I think I've heard of him. He has a huge church, Lakewood, in Houston. It's like that. Well, he got kind of canceled for not letting people in during the hurricane. Do you remember that? He like locked no. the doors. I didn't know that was a thing. I like me. Joel for his. <laughs> It holds like 100,000 people and he's like, no. Oh, no, they can come in. <laughs> yeah, I would literally be at the door and be like, no, I'm just kidding. Come on. <laughs> he's worth like $100 million and oh, he preaches on. God and stuff and people are very like, so I guess he got canceled for that. Don't count. Because I know a lot of people don't like Joel Steen. I like his like message and his like words of wisdom, but. <laughs> I mean, didn't, let me not bring that up. Who? What? Tell me. We can cut it. <laughs> I was about to say, didn't Noah not let everybody on the boat? <laughs> It was just animals. <laughs> I think he didn't let humans on the boat. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't know either. Too Why? much just happened for me to remember that when I learned it when I was little. Noah from the Bible you're talking about. Uh, Noah's Ark. Oh, did you think you were going to get canceled for talking about Noah from the Bible? <laughs> you're like, let me not bring that up. <laughs> I don't know anymore. Like, I, I literally, I put the Starbucks thing. I literally texted you Thank about you. it. I posted a Starbucks cup and got attacked <laughs> and I was like wait what is going on it was so funny when you texted me that I thought you were like warning me that like oh you might get some comments about me being canceled for Starbucks I'm like oh it's fine I'm not worried about it. like I thought you were, I was like wait what no like you're not uh, yeah right <laughs> and then I went to my TikTok because I had just put and I was like oh my god and I did a, I put in my comments like apology I'm like I'm so sorry I did not know we are boycotting we are not having Starbucks I boycotted no word. But, like, everybody will attack us. Like, it's, this it's is hard. my biggest thing with online. Like, people act like they're so justified to attack everyone. But it's like, take two fucking seconds. Yeah. If you really thought, me and you knew, yeah. what was going on with the Starbucks shit, you yeah. think we would have posted it. I know. It's Use wild. your fucking <laughs> context clues. I'm like, y'all know me. Yeah. You know, like, the people know you. Yeah. They're no, we're not going to, like, promote nothing like that. Like, clearly we didn't know what's going on. I know. I had no <laughs> idea. I was like, there's no sign at Starbucks that tells me. I was like, I'm sick. I got the little tea. I yeah. was like, I don't know. <laughs> Make that tea at home. I went to Air One, too. Go to Can we go there? Can we go I don't to know. Erewhan? I feel like Air One. <laughs> you get the bag. <laughs> I love Air on the $150 bag. I almost bought one the other day because I was like, I want to be like Trisha. so cute. And you know what? I wear it out shopping. Like, I love it. I feel so cute. We should do an Air one day, too. We need to do an A day of eating. Can we, please, can we do like the full day of eating? I, I would, would totally be that. there. Oh, my God. I don't know. You kind of scare me a little bit. Why? I don't know. <laughs> you're like, I just want to like knock people out. I feel like if you go to Air one and they don't get your smoothie right, you're just going to be like, pow. No, I'm very logical. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm very, very logical. I don't, I'm very nice. I'm very like sweet but like when people <laughs> when i'm provoked bad move right like just leave me alone i'm very understanding with customer service like i don't give a shit okay okay like i'm very cool yeah oh, okay okay yeah yeah but if someone like what if someone was rude to the customer service person like this is not the smoothie i want would you like knock that person out like think about what the is really important yeah <laughs> like i check people who are mean like that like little karens like i'll let them go let them go let them go and then it's like once i feel like you've taken it too far and the person behind the counter cannot speak up if I see that they're just not saying you've gone too far because they're scared of their job, I'll fucking say it because I can't get fired. I 
love that. Okay, I just saw a video clip this morning. I don't know if you saw it. Do you know who Neon is? I don't know either. They're like, Neon gets kicked out of Target. I think he's like a live streamer. I don't know. There's so many live streamers. But he was getting kicked out of Target for, I don't know, whatever, being obnoxious. And he, there was a security guard kicking him out. And he's like, what? This fucking fat ass? Like, all this stuff. Like, basically, like, harassing the security guard that's, like, kiss, kicking him out. I don't know why they're kicking him out of the store, but he was. And he kept calling this guy fat, this fat fat. Like, all this stuff like that. He's like, oh, you think you're powerful because you're a security guard? All this stuff like that. And it's like those little kids like that that are streaming 24 hours and being, like, so rude to, like, Target employees who are just kicking them out because it's, like, their job drive me nuts. Like, those are the people. Out of touch. Yes. And I also don't say – those are the people I feel like should get their asses kicked. Like, I don't say that very often, but I'm like, these kids, like, are going harassing these employees at Target, and then they get kicked and they keep filming. And they're filming him, and he doesn't want to be filmed. He's just trying to get them out, and they're, like, harassing him. And I'm like, why don't those people get their asses kicked? Like, you're harassing these, like, employees. That's why I personally think (laughs) sometimes assault should be legal. (laughs) Like, this is people that haven't been, like, have the shit smacked out of them when they were younger. Yeah, that's true. Like, you were disciplined. You were, like, beat. You were taught how to behave. I was too. I mean, I, I always was good. I actually never got disciplined. I never got grounded oh, or anything. <laughs> but like, you know how to watch your mouth. You know how to be polite. You know how to, like, understand. Yeah, it was just, like, in me, I guess. I don't know. You I know tip you... the Uber Eats drivers. <laughs> tip good the person. Uber Eats. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> tip your Uber Eats drivers, your DoorDashers. I door saw dashers. that episode. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> they really should. People who don't tip, I'm like, that's that drives me nuts, too. There are certain people that annoy me. It's people who don't tip, people who harass, harass like, service workers. People who are filming, like, service workers when they're just doing their job. I'm just like, let them do their job in this, like, little... That's weird. It was so weird. It was a video this morning, and it really made me so upset, and I don't know who this person is, but I was just like, those are the people for sure. You got... You did get... Not canceled, but people... You had to make a video addressing disciplining children. You talked about... Yeah. <laughs> was it just because of, like, the gesture you made? Because people were upset. What was your original video? It was like... It was me. I woke up and I was pissed off. And mm-hmm. I had to handle this a certain way. What I really wanted to do was get on there and tell everyone to go fuck themselves. <laughs> but my management at the time told me, you know, you have to handle this properly. But, like, basically, I made a video talking about, like, I'll discipline your fucking kid. Like, if you don't. Okay. And I didn't mean I'll hit your kid. I would never hit a fucking child. Right. But, like, if your kid is being obnoxious as fuck, at six in the morning, screaming. <laughs> you attend to it. What was the reference? Was there like something that happened that you were like thinking yes, of this? My okay, f- neighbor, let her kid like <laughs> oh. throw a tantrum every single day, <laughs> running up the hallway with the dog barking. They're both freaking out. The mom like wouldn't attend to the child. And I don't think I would ever like actually yell at a child. I, I really wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Like I would never discipline a child or like yell at them. I would yell at the parent and be like, yay, do your f- job yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) or i'll just look at them but like i don't think i'd ever target it at a kid so like i did speak wrong about that i was just so heated in the morning of Mm -hmm. like a week straight i was waking up at 6 a.m by these fucking people just screaming for no reason like take care of your take care of your child i know i feel like when you don't have kids it really is i was like that too it's kind of like okay this is yeah but like bad choice of words and then this one dumb bleep it (laughs) posted a video and took it out of context. Like, I get how it was taken out of context, but she basically was, like, saying that, like, she'll shoot me if I ever, like, oh. try and discipline like, her kid. Like, actually, she said that? Yeah, and oh then, like, God. everybody... There was a couple dumbasses. And then, like, the people <laughs> that, like... They they saw her video before mine. Mm-hmm. People that didn't know me didn't get it. But, like, it got on the wrong side of TikTok oh. under the impression of, like, you're a threat. I'm going to protect my child against you. It made this narrative get pushed. Mm. And everybody thought I was like threatening their kids. And I'm like, y'all are fucking dumb. Yeah. Like, yeah. are you for real? TikTok but is like that. If it was you, like the wrong side of people. That's the thing. If you see someone that like doesn't get it or doesn't know or the con- like, I know, I had no idea what the context was. I saw your like apology and I was like, wait, what is the context of this? I didn't this? apologize and then people got mad. Oh, I don't apologize. Right. Never. I will take accountability and okay, like, you're like, it was wrong choice of words. Address it as. Yeah. And you will watch my actions and I will fix it. Yeah. But like I never apologize in the video and there's this dumb other bitch <laughs> who would not shut up about me for like two months. He's gaslighting us. He never apologized. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Like y'all hear- f- took it wrong. <laughs> yeah. I acknowledged how I contributed to the incorrect perception. I fully own that. Yeah. Now own your side. Right. You saw a video and took off running in the wrong and direction. And they keep going with it. Yeah. It's kind of like, like girl, okay. I deaded the issue. I explained. No, if you just want to keep, like, punishing me, you're the asshole. Yeah. I just have to keep scrolling. When I see anything about me, I'm like, scroll right away. I just scroll fast because I'm like, I don't want to see what anyone says about me. Because <laughs> people say that, too. They always say for me, oh, she never apologized. I'm like, for what? I be, I've apologized for 1,000, 50,000 things. Probably you things apologize I don't too much. I apologize for everything. I apologize for this episode. I apologize for everything. I apologize for existing. I'm so sorry I'm here. Like, I just apologize right away. I don't away. eat shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> Could it be more opposite? You are a, you're born in March. Are you a Pisces? Okay. You're like a fish. Just like fish. I like that. That's cute. A little. I love fish. I love a little fish. Okay. That's interesting because I thought we'd be on opposite ends of the spectrum, but no, because I'm Taurus. Fish get on. Okay. That's cute because I think we're like so polar opposites. That's why you got but... your money up. You're a Taurus. Oh, for sure. Me and my yeah. sister like studied you a long time ago. I'm like, that's why this bitch is rich. Really? Taurus? <laughs> <laughs> I love making money. I told you though, I like hustle. Like we were talking about money and I was just like, I'll do cameos for 500 I'll take anything. I'll take $100. Like I'll take whatever. I'm just a hustle person. I just love to make money <laughs> for whatever. I don't even care. You know, I'll take a million dollars. I'll take a $10. Like whatever it is. <laughs> Pay me. <laughs> um, what, do you know your Chinese zodiac? Tiger. <gasps> My daughter's tiger. We have a big bling tiger upstairs because my daughter's a tiger. We bought I everything know, tiger. I see it. Yeah, I'll show you my house. I'll show you the Versace table. <laughs> Please. I feel like everyone who comes in, I give them like a tour of the house. I'm like, all right, let's go upstairs. I didn't know. I don't want to like push it and be like, oh, I want to see the house because like I'm very no, big on mind. privacy and stuff like that. But oh, like, no, no, I, I don't would mind. Love to. It literally is in my house. So it's, it's I, I'm actually honored when people want to see it. I'm always like, okay, it's very oh, cool. I'm yeah. Obsessed. All right, so back to the tour. So it's an all confidence tour. So people are going to mm. like leave feeling like good. They're not going to leave feeling. Yeah. Okay. And you're uncensored. What yes. else about the tour that's different? First of all, did you like your live show? Loved it. Yeah. You did meet and greets after? Mm-hmm. Are you going to do meet and greets again? Mm-hmm. Wild. How many did you meet? Do you know? I think like 100. <gasps> wow. Do you do a VIP before and then do you do a meet and greet after? Do you do both? It was before. Okay. That's fun. But it was fun. VIP before. <gasps> 100 then, people? Yeah. Wow. Like the, we, didn't do, we didn't get to do one for GA because like the timing for the venue – like, we had, like, a – you have to be out by this time. So, we – like, it was mm-hmm. VIP only me and Greg. At the beginning. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, where did you do it in L.A.? The Roxy. <gasps> I just saw that, too. And I was like, I wanted – I didn't know you had – do you have one in L.A. now? You said you were doing, like, West Coast for these next shows. I don't – I was going to invite you. Oh, why didn't you? I was going we to. We had this interview set up. I could have re- reviewed me. it. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I, I was come. like, I want Trisha to come. But I was like, you hate influencers. No. And I was like, <laughs> I hate to, like, bring her around. Oh, was it like an influencer event? Was it a lot of influencers? Like like the section where I had my people was like a lot of my friends who were influencers and I was like, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable, but I was like, I don't know what to do. Is there someone you don't think I like that you're friends with? I love everybody now, by the way. I turned a new leaf. I'm like a monk now. I think everyone is beautiful. Come on my podcast, every influencer. I truly mean that. I love them. Who was it that you don't think I like? Okay, we'll have to bleep this. Okay. But. (laughs) We can bleep out the. (laughs) Oh. Oh. Wait, do they? Hate, I mean, like they were there, but like it was just like <laughs> them, and I was like, like I don't, I don't know, like I didn't know if you were like able to like, like not give up. I was like, I just didn't want you to like feel like you had to go and then be uncomfortable. That's so funny. Um, first of all, no, like okay, no, you know what? I feel the opposite. I feel like what you're saying, but reverse. Like I have no problem going, but I never want anyone else to feel uncomfortable or if they dislike <sighs> me because they have a reason to dislike me, and I right. don't ever like. I never expect anyone to forgive me or anything like that. Like, I, I understand why people don't like me. I'm fully aware of that. But it's more of like, yeah, if I go to a party and other people don't like me there, then it can be awkward. I mean, back in the day when people didn't like me, I was like, ooh, it's awkward. But um, I love every influencer and I love them too. So I are know. they your friends? Tell them I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the show. We want to say what, but I'm a fan of the show. We watched it. We watched the season finale the other day. So. I know. I heard you yeah. talking Yeah. Yeah. I'm not... I'm too old to be a hater at this point. I think I was a hater for so long because I hated myself. That's the deep, that's the deep truth. But um, now I'm in a great place. So I'm just fat, happy, yeah. and I love everybody. I love it. Yeah. I would love to be on Ozempic, but I'm scared. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the fat, happy person. So when I hear you talk sometimes, I'm like, I don't know. I really like, I don't know. I'm I'm not happy because I'm fat. I'm just fat and happy. They're not like, yeah. sim- you know, they're just parallel. That's one thing people think that I don't understand is like people can be happy with the way that they look. And I'm like... I'm not saying you have to be this ideal, but like if you do want to change it, here is how to do it. Oh, I'm not happy with the way I look. You know what I mean? I was saying I look like a fat piece of shit. I don't like the way I look, but I'm happy. That's what I'm saying. They're separate. I'm so happy in life, but like, I mean, I do, I hate being fat, but I'm so happy. So it kind of counteracts each other. You're like, it's tolerable. <laughs> yeah. To me, I like, I don't think about how I look because I'm so happy, but sometimes when I watch myself or I sit next to someone, I'm like, oh my gosh, I look like a big, I think I'm the size of, again, every influencer that's on here. I mean, we are the same size. You're the first guest to match I need my to weight. Go. <laughs> oh my God. I make you feel like a fucking huge fan. Oh, no, I but I, in a I weird way, I feel issue. fit. Yeah. I feel fit because you're 235. I'm like, Okay, we're the same and we're both fit. <laughs> we're both I love it. We're both good looking and <laughs> No, I have this thing like I don't realize how big I am. Like I feel very much like six foot a lot of the time. 
I mean, that's still huge. Six foot's very big. But I feel big. like you don't know what you look like. like. I wish I could, like, give you my <laughs> eyes for a second so Aww. you could, like, see you. Yeah, you said I looked like a little puppy or something. No, I said you give me cute aggression like a little puppy. Oh, okay, like, you're so that. adorable. I just went, ah. That was so nice. That was great because when I saw you, I was, like, super intimidated because I get intimidated Why? by, like, good-looking fit people because I just, I'm like, I know I look like a little jinxy from Pokemon. You know, I'm just, like, this little, like, troll-looking thing. i never Pokemon. I don't either. Everyone just tells me I look like this character. It's like a little, I don't know, she's a blob. <laughs> <laughs> oh my She's God. a blob. But um, but I, I I was very excited. When I met you, you just had like good energy. I was like, okay, he's not touching me. And I just come from Taco Bell, so I was really nervous. I was like, oh, he's gonna smell the cheese on Girl, my I would have told you to get me. I know. Oh my god, I was sneaking out. I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna run out real quick and get a cute little snack. And... That's one thing I'm very big about. Like growing up Albanian, like food, I never and one like growing up fat, like I never I hated feeling embarrassed around food. So like anytime I'm with people, I encourage people to eat whatever they want. Mm. And like I don't ever want people to feel like they have to censor themselves or order different. Like I want you to eat. I censor like, myself. I'm finna fucking eat. Like so right. eat what you want to eat. I yeah. hate when people feel uncomfortable or like I always order way too much. Because I don't like for people to not have enough or feel like, oh, I can't have that. It's like, I want to feed everyone. Like, oh. I want everyone to feel comfortable and happy. <gasps> like, I don't like people feeling judged because I hated it. Yeah. But, like, at the same time, people judge me all the time for, like, cutting my butter off or, like, not eating certain things. I'm really? Like, Girl, shut up and eat your shit. We're, like, LA like, now. Everybody, like... let's just eat. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm with you, but I will. I, most people I don't eat in front of. Like, it takes me a long time to be comfortable. Unless it's, like, someone who, like, knows me for eating, like, mukbangs. Okay, fine. And then we'll eat. But, it's yeah, it takes me a minute to, like, get comfortable. Like, if we just go – if I go out to eat for, like, a business dinner or something like that, I, like, eat, like, a salad. <laughs> and I eat, like, half of it. I'm like, okay, I'm full. I don't ever <laughs> judge people for, like, eating like that. I think people have a really big misconception of me. Yeah. Like, I, think, I get it. But, like, yeah, I feel you, like I just haven't talked about the opposite enough. Like, I, I am the way I am, but, like, I also have the understanding of what it feels like to be judged. Yeah. So, like, I get that, and I never want people to feel that. Yeah, I feel like because – but it's really not, like, your brand. Your brand is very, like – I don't know. It's really good because it's unique. The fact that you are so um, – I can say the word aggressive. I don't mean aggressive, but you're you're just so in someone's face. You're so blunt, which usually I don't like – like, blunt is hard for me. Like, when I first met my husband, he was very blunt, <laughs> and I was like, um, can you not be so blunt? Like, I don't know. It was, just, it was just a lot. But I think that's, like, a really unique perspective, and a lot of people, like, need to hear that. You know, they always mm -hmm. say, like – not that you're a fat shamer, but, like, they say fat shaming works because, you know, if you tell someone they're fat, they're going to be like, okay, I need to lose weight or whatever. Um, so I think your technique works. But I do like the soft side of you that, like, understands and, like, you know, says, you know, I like to eat and I have a cheat meal whenever I want and stuff. I think that's, like, an important message, too, which I think is great. But, like, the way my – like, a day of eating with me right now, like, where I say it's kind of hell is, like, I'll eat very, very clean and, like, good. Mm -hmm throughout the day because a lot of meetings will come up at night. I'll get invited out with friends. It's like, let's go here. Let's go do this. Like, I never know what's going to come up. Right. So like if I eat clean during the day, I know I can like have a little extra at night or like do whatever at night and it's not going to hurt me. Yeah. But like when I do have, like last night, I ate clean all day and then I didn't do anything at night. So like I just got to have fun and just like ate. Like I ate a little extra and like didn't give a shit. What's your little extra? What'd you have? A lot of extra. <laughs> <laughs> like I love cereal. I eat cereal. Oh God, I feel like that's a healthy food too. I eat it when I'm like healthy. I like popcorn. <gasps> I love frozen mm. mango. Oh my God, this like, is all very healthy. <laughs> frozen mangoes like and then put them on the counter for like 30 minutes and let oh. them get like a little squishy but still frozen. Oh my gosh. I eat Halo Top ice cream. I eat like little like ice cream bars all the time. But that's like healthy ice cream too, right? So you're yeah. like, you're still, so you're still like conscious about what you're eating. Mm -hmm. You're not eating like a Hagen dazs or something like that. But I also knew I have to come on your podcast today and I don't want to look like... Bloated, bloated so. I feel you. But I have shit. Like, I have to be on camera all the time and, like, shoots, events. I'm like, that's girl. true. Like, I, it's just in the back of my head. Yeah. No, that makes sense. That's why I, like, loved when I just owned being like, you know what, I'm plus size because then I can just show up looking fat. And I'm like, oh, that's what they expect. You know, it's the greatest. <laughs> um, where did the confidence come from? Because you talk so much about confidence. Your whole tour is about confidence. Like, did and you said you got bullied as a kid. Did you have confidence as a kid and None. then got, it got bullied out? Okay. From day one, you never had confidence and didn't get, like, bullied I was, like, out of cripplingly you. insecure for so long. Like, did not ever think anyone actually liked me, could love me, found me interesting. Like, I felt like a bother to everything and everyone. Where did that come never from? Never good enough. Like, I was never anyone's favorite. And I was never, like, picked by anybody. Like, Someone at school? was always chosen over me with mm -hmm. everything. Like, family, school, all that stuff like that. So, where did you get the confidence? Where did it come from? Because it sounds like you've had a lot. You've had abuse as a child. You were in a, a toxic relationship. Where did you get the confidence through all that? It was, like, a long process of, like, flipping a lot of perspectives and, like, revisiting a lot of experiences with, like, one of my parents or, like, people I cared about. Like, my aunt was someone who's very important to me and was, like, the closest person to me. Met a guy. Like, I woke up one day and she had moved 
to Pennsylvania out of fucking nowhere. Mm. Like, threw me away and, like, mm. went. But, like... Like abandonment. Why? Like, I looked at it like I wasn't good enough. Mm-hmm. Like, you didn't care about me. You just, just discarded me. It's like, that's how I looked at it. And it's like, I had to revisit that and be like, what are other possibilities? Like, what are other reasons she would have done that other than just to throw the knife at me? Like, you're not good enough. You're not shit. Like, what was she feeling? What did she need? What did she want from life? Why did she not communicate it to me? Mm-hmm. And in reality, she, like, felt too bad. We've talked about it. But, like, she didn't know what to say and didn't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. But, like, there was urgency to go. But, like, just revisiting people's, like, intentional – like, assuming people intentionally wanted to hurt me mm-hmm. – revisiting that and seeing how it wasn't intentional. Yeah, it wasn't and like, about you. they were dealing with their own shit. Like, when you're very insecure, you think everything's about you. You take everything so personally. Yeah. I still do a lot, mm-hmm. but, like, I'm good at checking myself. I'm like, Leo, come on. Right. But, like, I had to revisit a lot of experiences where it was, like, I looked at so many things, like, this is validation. You have no worth to – I had to flip it and see, like, how is this not validation of that? Mm-hmm. Like, how is there something else going on? Wow, that's amazing. It took a long time and a lot of work, but like I know how to crack these perspectives and that's how I can like share it. Like I've done all this work for years. Right. And it's like now I can like wrap it up pretty and give it to you at the show. And I think that's a really great message. I think that's like the best message anyone can have is like it's never personal. People feeling insecure, thinking the world is, oh, they think I'm fat. They think I'm eating too much. They think whatever. It's like never personal or why someone leaves you. It's like it's never about you really I always thought that too with like my dad I was like well he went to a different state he didn't care about it's like it was it was about my mom it was about other things it wasn't about like us but you think that in your head and so I think that's the biggest thing even now in general whenever people like attack me online or something it's like it's never really personal because I know like when I've hated on people it's always like something that has to do with them like internally yeah. they're mad because they're fat and not happy or they're mad and they can't eat or I don't know whatever the case is or I'm keeping this about myself but um it is a really good thing to tell people it's like it's never personal sometimes it is you think like so? you have to see like when but like my biggest analogy i always talk about and i want to buy a birkin because of this do you want a because... birkin i have a rainbow birkin you want to buy it <laughs> not a rainbow one i'm not that gay no one wants it it's the worst it's the worst investment ever okay anyways i've been trying to sell my birkin i saw it on your stories i was like wait somebody buy it already <laughs> shit i'm done i'm done promoting it it looks like i'm like literally like I'm broke. I'm like, here, buy this. No, Anyways. like, I always talk about, like, I, I see so much in you, and that's the reason I've connected with you for so long, is because, like, I've seen who you are and your character and your heart, like, on YouTube for so long, and it's like, you were just put in the wrong hands with so many people. It's like, I always talk about, it's like, if you give a Birkin to a crackhead, it's a very valuable thing, mm-hmm. but if you give it to somebody who cannot recognize it, they're going to throw it around, beat it up, mistreat it. Mm-hmm. We're the Birkins sitting here left questioning our value mm-hmm. because of how we've been treated. Like, are we actually valuable? Am I actually worth $20,000? Mm-hmm. Like, do I have that value? And it's like, if you take that same bag and go give it to you who knows the worth of it, mm-hmm. you're going to get it and you're going to dust it off and you're going to put it on a shelf mm-hmm. and like and admire it and make sure nothing happens to it. When you use it, you're going to be so delicate. Right. You're going to know how to treat it because mm-hmm. you see the value. And it's like, I feel like we both struggle with like, we've been given to crackheads too many times. Mm-hmm. We've been in people's hands who didn't know how to treat us mm-hmm. because they couldn't see it. Yeah. And that's why I'm so happy you have him mm-hmm. because okay. he's like fixed all of this mm-hmm. and like shown you, you have so much more to offer. Mm-hmm. It's so true. I know. I know they say like people can't heal you or stuff like that, but I really do like feel like he – I was like, oh, this person loves me enough. I should probably like love myself. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, wow, he really loves me through all this shit. And I was like, I should probably love myself. And I do – like I know that's like not the answer for most people is like be happy with yourself first, but I was miserable. I've been miserable my whole life until I met him and then I was like, oh, someone really loves me. Like I should probably try to love me, which I never have either my whole life. Like I never like loved myself ever. I know. And now I like love myself and it's like <laughs> – and that's where I'm at. I'm just like this thing where I just like I really love myself. But but because my issue is also weight, I'm just always that struggling too. I'm always like, God, I wish I was skinny. But I'm but like with know. him, like you've, I, I like what where I'm talking about like the questioning value thing. Like you didn't see like what was lovable about you for so long. You questioned if it was Never. even there. You were yeah. the Birkin that thought they were a dollar. Yeah. It's like you've forgotten the value was ever even there, and then it's like mm-hmm. him reflecting it to you. Mm-hmm. It's like wait. It is there and you start to see it. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, hey, I appreciate these things. It's and wild. there's so many more things that you have to offer and like give to people mm-hmm. that have nothing to do with your weight at all. 
I'm dead serious. I'm... Like, I've been waiting to, like, talk to you Aww. in person. I'm going to cry. Because, like, <laughs> I've seen it. And I'm, like, I'm so happy you're finally seeing it. It means a lot coming from me, too, because, like, I watch your videos and sometimes I'm just like, oh, my gosh, like, I lack self-confidence. I have no this, you know? And it's like – or lack um self-control, like, you know? And I always think that and I always just think – because all the comments is about my weight, I'm just like, oh, that's all I have. And I'm like, oh, God, if it's like, if I lost weight, people would, like you said, respect you more, all this stuff like that. But that means a lot. And that's why I'm, that's where I get struggled in life. It's like, I'm really happy. I feel like I'm like a good person now, but thank you, babe. <laughs> um, I think it's like a therapy session. You're my life coach now. <laughs> Let's go through all my problems. But um, I really appreciate that. Yeah, it is one of those things you just think, and I think it's because of weight, like in relationships, on YouTube, anything. It's like my my weight has always been like the joke, you know. It's like, oh, how much are you eating? Or, you know, you're so like fat. It's I like a weird thing. Shit. Yeah. And so you just get conditioned to think that. It's just like such a weird thing. And you're just like, okay, I don't know. Oh, and being online is just like a whole other toxic thing. But thank you for saying that. You're so sweet. Of course. I really appreciate that. Like the Especially. your weight <laughs> is like the least – interesting thing about you mm -hmm. it's like the way that i look is like the least interesting thing yeah i agree with that it's yeah. like so much more about who you are like you're just people like people can see past it i just yeah. want you to know people see past and people see you. you and i always have but now i really do because i've met you oh my gosh i know <laughs> right away i just loved your energy and i was just like well i was surprised i was really surprised i was nervous like i said to meet you just because you are so you've worked on yourself you work hard and um i'm just like always like a little scared i'm like oh no they're gonna look at me and be like you do not work hard on yourself no. you know what i mean but i know what you mean because when i look at other people bigger or whatever than me i never look at people and like oh my god they're fat or oh my god they're eating this like i never, never. look at other people that way ever so i know we with your videos and your podcast and your tour, I always know it comes from a place like I've been here and this is like what I'm – like my journey. And, and I feel like just you sharing your journey inspires other people without being judgy or whatever. Even yeah. though like at first it can come across like, oh my gosh, you must think, you think I'm a big whale. But you're like, no, it's your experience. Like I under – when you understand something, you can't judge it. Yeah. And like when I see someone who like is overweight or whatever it is or like doesn't keep themselves and like they're not hygienic, it's like mm -hmm. I understand – what you're dealing with and everything that goes into that. I know what you're struggling with. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to look at you and judge you because I get it. Yeah. And it's usually more than just like food or something. It's always so like. So much more. Yeah. It's like something mentally you're going through or oh, yeah. just anything. It's like, a, it's almost like a crutch. Like it's, people don't see that. But one person I do judge the fuck out of oh is, my... is Nikocado Avocado. <laughs> Wait, why? Lost his goddamn mind. Why? Really? <laughs> no. Like that's just like gross. Really? Like the shit that he does for <clears throat> views and like the way he like. What? Like Interesting. I get, I get the clickbait shit. Mm -hmm. I get being like shocking, but like, huh? Yeah. And he, and he, yeah, right. Like no concern about how you're being perceived at all. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm jealous. Yeah, I'm yeah. jealous no, that same. like, I can't just fully just. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not give a fuck about any perception of me. No, I I love Nick Akato as a person. It is it's wild to watch. He's very hard to get a hold of now. I wanted him on the podcast. I'm like he's he's very hard. He's very. I've never met him. I've never interacted. Like I've just seen some shit. And I'm like, damn girl. It's wild because he was like vegan before his yeah. thing, and he was very very thin. And then he he documents obviously his weight gain to like I think he's trying to be 600 pounds, which is interesting. It's. I love Nick and I definitely don't judge anybody, but it is one of those things where it's like, does it glorify obesity? Does it glorify eating? You know, when you're like, oh, I'm almost 600 pounds, I'm getting heavier. Or is it more just like for views? It's like baiting for views, you think? Like this extreme, almost sort of like freak show, I guess, because his belly is out, his all the stuff like that. I always wonder, it's kind of like the Eugenia on the flip side of that, right? Is like, does that glorify eating disorder, being skinny, not eating? Like, I always wonder that with big because people come for eugenia but they don't come for nikocado as much or maybe they do maybe i don't see it i always wonder i just wonder what he's going through because i know like there's so much more going on mentally like i know i'm like i'm saying i judge like the, mm -hmm. like the theatrics and all of it but it's like i look at it and i mean I'm, I'm immediately like work bitch and then i'm yeah, like yeah. like in my head i'm like i know that there's a lot going on because he shot up very fast like in like views and money oh, yeah. and like you get addicted to that and like i've experienced the fame now mm -hmm. and that just alone can like break a lot of people mentally and yeah. then it's like that plus the like pressure. trying to keep the attention keep the money he's in a toxic relationship he's like talked about it yeah but is that real i don't know right because you but see like, it like he beat me he's leaving me whatever all this stuff yeah i don't know if it's theatrics or if he's actually in it yeah but, i don't like, know either he doesn't seem like he has a lot of people around him he's 
like I know everything he's dealing with. Mm-hmm. I'm dealing with it like with just the fame aspect, but then the toxic relationship, like the reversing your body and feeling worse and like being with a partner. It's like there's so much going on mentally with him. I would love to like dissect it, but yeah. like same. Like I judge shit and then I'm like, Leo, you know better. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I think a lot of people do. When you see, because he wears the oxygen mask, you know, all stuff like he can't breathe. You know, it's that's like, the whole. get your views, girl. Right. <laughs> and when I knew him, I don't know, 2019, he was saying he was just doing it for like another year, saving up all his money, and then he was going to like stop. And so like people did think for a minute he was going to lose. I think he will. I think one day he's going to like go on this like big weight loss thing because he knows how to do it. He's vegan. I don't think, I don't think he lacks self-control. I think it's for money and views, which is addicting. I used to troll all the time because I was like, oh my God, I get $10,000 if I piss people off. Okay, let me do another video to piss people off. So I think it's more about money just from what I knew about him like years ago, but He's really nice. I like him, but it is one of those things. That's why I stopped doing mukbang so big because I never wanted to like trigger people like in a bad way, like being like, oh, this is good to be this fat and whatever. Now I just eat my meals and I'm like, well, if you judge me for that, then that's whatever. I don't like that whole stigma around like people just doing what they want to do and everybody being like, you're trying to make this okay. No, bitch. I'm just living. Like if you yeah. want to eat a lot of food, eat the food. Yeah. If Eugenia don't want to eat, don't eat, bitch. <laughs> You're not glorifying by just being yourself. You're not telling people, this is how I don't eat. This is how I deal with the cravings. This is how I eat this much food. It's like you're not telling people how to do it. You're just being you. Do you think, though, I agree, I agree, but like, like it makes you mad. (laughs) Do you think, though, when you show off your body, like Nikocado just showing his big belly in the biggest way, and Eugenia wearing nothing to show her hip bones and, you know, all stuff like that, do you think that is glorifying, like obesity glorifying being skinny? Just, I don't know. I'm just asking your opinion on it. I don't really know what their intention behind it is, but, like, so what if she wants to show her little hip bones off? And, like, we know <laughs> she's doing it for, like, a little – like, why I show my shoulders? It's, like, you need a little bit of, like, the attention. Right. But, like, Nick showing his, like, stomach, it's shocking when you see the TikToks. Like, you see him flailing about and, like, being crazy. It's, like, the shock factor. But like, these dumbass yeah. people doing street interviews, they show, like, the theatrical responses – to get attention. Like, everybody's doing it. Right. It's not, like, glorifying, in my opinion. Yeah. It's like, if you want to do it, do it. But it's like, it's like with me. I'm sharing how I achieve certain things. And, like, people want, you're promoting eating disorders. No, bitch. I'm answering questions for people who ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, it's so hard to just get straight, direct, like, information now. Because mm-hmm. everyone's so scared to get canceled. That I'm like, I'll tell true. you what I did. But don't tell me I'm promoting shit, girl. Yeah. You I- asked. Right. <laughs> and you do it in a very different way. You do it in a very, like, you know, you look healthy. You have this healthy mindset. Like, you know, it's it's a little different. But, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. It is interesting. Like, mm-hmm. when I used to smoke cigarettes online, people, like, I quit smoking. Oh, I did see that. I was like, wait, you smoke cigarettes? I miss them every day. How did you but, stop? Like, I just quit. Wow. You have the willpower. <laughs> you're the ultimate. I need a course in that. I'd come to your tour if you did it on willpower. It's like, it's. How do you I, that's just a good one. quit? Like, I just quit. Like, what's the, again, what's the click? You're like, okay, is there something like one day you're just like, I can't breathe? Like, what is it? You don't vape? No. I kind of like, I'll like hit a vape. Like, my mom brought me one to my first show and I was like, oh my God, it's like the one I had in Florida. So I would like, I hit it and then it's like, I was done with it. Oh my God, I love But that. like, I smoked cigarettes in Paris. Like, I quit for a month. Uh-huh. And then I went to Paris and I smoked while I was there and then I dropped it when I came back home. Wow. Like, I'm, I'm able to do that. But I, the way I kind of like flip it and like get that switch it's like I prepare mentally, like, okay, this thing I'm about to do, like quitting smoking, for me to like throw out these cigarettes right now, from this moment forward, like the, my whole life is about to be different. It's about to feel different. Mm-hmm. Like my life as I knew it, I'm throwing it away. And it's like just a matter of like stepping into like, now when I get these urges, I cannot satisfy them with that. You got to find something else. You got to like learn how to deal with when you want to smoke. You're no longer allowed to do it. So it's going to feel uncomfortable. But, like, it's going to get better. And just preparing myself mentally of, like, getting that reality check of your life as you know it is over as soon as you decide to quit. It's a whole new life. Right. Like, that's what kind of does it. So, like, when these feelings do come up or these urges, it's like, oh, I have to go back. It's like, no, I'll find something else. Or, like, like, I'll just deal with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you don't necessarily have to replace one addiction with another. Like, a piece of gum. Fucking eat a piece of mango. That's what I was doing. Not the mango. It's the second time you brought up the mango. mango. (laughs) (laughs) I like mango smoothies, but... I don't know about just like a frozen mango. That's kind of how I do it, like quitting. Do you do the frozen grapes too? Have you seen that snack? Everyone's like, "Mm, these frozen grapes are so good at night with a little sugar on them or something. 
I don't know. You like them? Hell yeah. I guess I have to try it. I don't know. I have to, again, I have to try all these TikTok healthy eating habits. Oh my God. We so, should do a YouTube video where like you make, like we can literally do like <laughs> making your favorite meals and like all of your favorite oh, meals yeah. and I'll make, like I'll make it how I would make it and like substitute really? things. Really? That, that would, would be, cool. be so good. <laughs> I want a McDonald's McGriddle. Like that would be so good. Do you know what that is? <laughs> yes. With the pancake and the egg them. and the bacon. Oh my God. That'd be so good. But you couldn't make that healthy. I don't think. Mm-hmm. How are you going to substitute the pancake? <laughs> There's protein pancakes. Oh, my God. That sounds a lot. It sounds like a rock in my belly or something. <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> protein. Like, they're good. Like, you just substitute, like, the pancake. Mm. Make it healthier. Sugar-free syrup. Get the little taste. Egg, done. And then, like, turkey well, bacon. Well, egg's good. For- oh, really? Turkey bacon's better than pig bacon? Why? Like, low calorie. It's lower calorie. And less mm. fat. God, I love pig bacon so much. It's good. I could eat, like, a pound of that. Do you like it, like like flimsy or like it like crispy i like both i like the fat and i also do like a crispy like he'll make them well done for me but i i like a little flimsy at the restaurants like a little rubbery how about you i like this shit burnt yeah he does them crispy i like them both i like it all i just love (laughs) i love hot dogs oh my fucking god you love hot dogs (laughs) yes i haven't eaten one in like five years what part of the pig is that I think it's all of it. I think it's just everything blended up. That's what they said. They said that's like all the weird parts. I just love a pig. They say you are what you eat, so. <laughs> no. I love a little pig, what am I, mom. fucking salmon or a mango? Okay, Do I'm you like salmon? Yes, I eat salmon every day. Oh, my God. You're like my husband. He always eats salmon. We're going to eat and I'll get like pasta. And he's like, I have a salmon. I was like, really? <laughs> you talk about a lot about like hookup culture in general. Are you, Have you never been about it? Or did something change in you that you're like, I don't like this anymore? Because you talk about it Yeah, I used you to and- do it. Like when I was younger, Mm -hmm. but before this guy, I didn't hook up with anyone for like almost a year and a half. Like no one like sexually for a year and a half Mm -hmm. because I hated how I felt after hooking up. Like I felt disgusting. Mm -hmm. Like the people just like, eh, like I don't like it. Never. Did you never like it? I liked it for a little bit until I realized how empty it was. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm over it. Yeah. And I'm not someone that's driven by sex. Like, I don't have, like, that desire to, like, hook up and be doing things all the time. Like, I have it, of course. Yeah. But I'm not the person who has to, like, have sex five times a day. Right. He gets tired. You never... I know I saw one of your lectures that you were like, you know, just because you feel like you have to have sex doesn't mean like you'll die if you don't. And I was like, yeah. I used to feel like I would die if I didn't. Like I had to get it like every five hours of the day. Like it was crazy. But there's a lot of like emotional stuff in that. Oh, like why you need it all the time? Yeah, like understanding your desires and like what's getting met through certain things. Yeah. You'll learn a lot. Oh, it would make me feel like crap too all the time. I thought I liked it. I thought I was like in control of it. I was like, this is great. Like I'm empowered. But yeah, it always made me feel like crap. Like no one ever wanted to take me out. And then that's when I felt like, oh man, like I'm like the secret. I was always hidden. And yeah. And then I was like, well, it made me feel desired in the moment. Because you feel sexy in the moment. I think that's the thing. A, a lot of – I'll just speak for fat people again. But like me being a fat person, you feel sexy because you're like, oh, my God, all these guys want me. So I'm like hot, you know, if they want to have sex with me. And then when like someone didn't, then you'd feel rejected. But no one ever said no to me. So I was like, oh, I'm so hot. You know what I mean? But then <laughs> you, you feel hot, like <laughs> – But then you do feel empty like you said. What would yeah. you feel? So you'd hook up and then you would just feel disgusted by yourself or by them? Both. Mm-hmm. Like the way that they – like, I'm a weird, I'm a Pisces, I'd be sensitive to hell. Oh. Like, I like to feel important and special, and I only like things that are special. Mm-hmm. So, like, people who didn't treat me like I was important, I'm not attracted to you. But you can't know someone, you can't expect to be treated like you're important if you've known someone for a week. Mm-hmm. You can't yeah. be expected to like be treated like that. So it's unrealistic for me to expect that. And I would just feel like shit, like I wasn't like valued or wasn't, like that's my biggest trigger. Yeah. It's like if I don't feel valued, I will fucking leave. Like on the drop of a hat. Yeah. I've left so many people, so many friends. My parents I've cut off. I've cut off so many people. Wow. Friendships and I just too. cut off a few because they didn't go to my first show. Oh, wow. Like, one went to some other person's concert. Did they have a... Oh, okay. And then my other one just, like, <laughs> didn't respond to my text. Were they close like, friends of yours? Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Like, That'd most be... of the friends that I made before I moved here, I don't talk to anymore. Because because you didn't feel valued by them. Yeah, or they just pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> How? Like, you said you were sensitive, so maybe maybe it was, like, a little... Sen- I, was I very know sensitive when too. I'm overly sensitive, I can okay. check myself. Okay. And I'll, like, talk about it. But, like, if someone's just blatantly inconsiderate or, like, disrespectful, get f***ed. I had so many people. I was dating a guy. He didn't come to my shows. I had a best friend of 10 years that didn't come to my shows. I just, like, people just never came to my shows. <laughs> I was okay with it. I was like, it's, good. it's fine. I wouldn't come either. <laughs> uh, no, if you were closer to me, I would have. 
But no, it, yeah. Oh, well. Like back in the day, like I would have been there. Really? Like, you and Zach Sang was there. <laughs> he was the only other friend of mine that showed up. I saw you on his show and I was just like, I love that you've gone everywhere. You're on everybody's podcast. How do you do it? Okay, so you have new management now, but you said you had old management before. Were they getting you on podcast? Or were people just reach out? Because I reached out to you. Do people just reach out to you? Some people, re- like most people reach out, mm-hmm. but like I reached out to Drew. That was my first podcast that I ever did, Drew Afiolo. Oh, okay. So you just and like liked her. I reached out to her and then I went to her and then it's like, it kind of snowballed. Okay, because people, or yeah, like, you people see, because mm-hmm. you're on so many, so I was like, oh, I'm going to ask him to be on mine, because you never know who's going to do what. So you reached out to her, you were just like a fan, you're just like, I want to meet this person. You yeah, have similar we were vibes. mutuals, and I was like, this could be funny. Right, because you have the same, um, like, yeah, bluntness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like it. I think it's cool. Yeah, I like her too. She, she's so opposite of me too, because I'm just someone who, like, won't say anything to anyone. I'm just like, I don't know. I, maybe I used to. I don't know. I'm back and forth. But uh, when people are just so blunt, I'm like, oh, I kind of admire that. I could never. Really? No. I, I feel it. so happy in this chair. Like, my feet have been dangling this whole time. I, I keep know. swinging them. How do you feel? Do you like, feel small? I feel so little. <laughs> <laughs> you like, wait, do you like to feel little? Because I remember you said your type is you, but you need someone tall, you said. <laughs> You're like, I like someone that looks like me, but my shorter. My type is myself, but shorter, but over 5'10". Okay, you don't want someone taller than you. Okay. <laughs> I'm not swinging up. Well, girl. I don't know if you like no. to feel little. You know, so, like I no. like to feel little. Like that's why I like to stand next to you. I'm like, oh my god, I feel so tiny. <laughs> I hate feeling like little with the person that I'm with. Thank Are you, you happiest in a relationship? Do you think? No, I'm miserable. Wait, why? Like in. My... <laughs> <laughs> oh my no, like, gosh. I I love <laughs> having like an object of desire. Hmm. And having a person, like, I feel so, like, happy with it. This is something I haven't talked about online. Like, how my brain works. Mm-hmm. But, like, I'm in a relationship. I'm a fucking nightmare for myself. Because, you overthink? Like, not that I overthink. It's, like, a reflex. So, like, if you're ever out with me in public or, like, if something drops or, like, there's a random sound, I jump. Like, it's, like, a my body's, like, reaction from, like, the physical shit I've been through in the past. Mm. Like I always just like react and like get ready. And there's no way to fix that. Mm -hmm. It's like people that go to war and you try and Um, make them not jump at a firework. Like I jump at everything. You have PTSD. Like like. like I get ready. But like that's a, it's like a reaction. It's like, what is like a reflex? Mm -hmm. My brain from like the manipulation and like lies and betrayals I've been through. It's like, and also the awareness I have and like what I've seen happen and done like, I'm aware of everything. Mm-hmm. So, like, any time something happens or, like, there's a gap in communication or, like, anything left to question, it's, like, my brain, I don't think about it. It's, like, a reflex. Mm-hmm. My brain will, like, have this reflex where it will, like, like, fill in this, 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 or this could be happening. And it's, like, I, like, it's genuine hell to, like, live with that. Mm-hmm. And I deal with it every single day. Where, hmm, maybe that's where, like, meditation would come in, or if you clear your thoughts. What if you had no thoughts? What if you just, like, when those thoughts come in, let them go out? I have to, like, address them. Mm. Like, when I think, okay, he could be doing this right now, or, like, this means this. I have to, like, sit there and observe the thought and, like, talk it down and, like, shoot holes in the argument. Like, this isn't true because of this, and, like, this isn't true because of this. Like, it's not overthinking. It's, like, all of a sudden, this these things just come up, and then I feel a certain way. And then I have to, like, shoot them all down. Like, I can comfort myself and get myself through it. But it's, like, a lot to deal with. And that's something a lot of people don't – I've never heard someone talk about that. It's not like I can control it or it's, like, it's not like you go to therapy and you fix it and you're not sitting with your thoughts enough. It's, like – Right. It's just the response and, like, the reaction. What did I call it before? Reflex. Right. It's, like, when you tap your knee with Mm -hmm. a little hammer and it swings, trying to make yourself stop doing that. It's a reflex. Like, my brain has been, like – I don't know if it's damaged or, like – seen too much but yeah. that's just how it goes but like it gets better the closer I get with people mm-hmm. anyone in that role right I'm gonna be in this hell with it's like I'm in my own hell up here and mm-hmm. like fighting for this to like work but I enjoy it so much mm-hmm. but it's like that comes with it it's like my cross to bear with a relationship right I feel like maybe over time it'll just go away because like it's almost like He'll just show you, like, these are irrational. There's nothing that it's based in. Yeah. Or it's not even that it's irrational. It's just, like, something that you're holding on to from your past. Or, like you said, it's almost like a PTSD where maybe over time – I don't know how. I don't know how. But 
I was in a different way. I was kind of like that too. I was always just thought like he's always talking to someone. He's always trying to like cheat on me. Like, you know, just it, it wasn't him. It was just like stuff that I had. And I just thought every guy was like that. And I think it's just like over time. I don't know. Yours is a little different because it is like it's almost like you said it's like a reflex. It's not even like it's based on anything. So that's a little more difficult. But I know what it's like to be like a hell in your own mind. But maybe I just think like it'll be like five years in and you'll just be like, okay, those don't even come because you'll forget what that's even like. It's almost like blocking it out. It's gotten so much better. Like I said, as I get close with someone and as I like can build a case for them Mm -hmm. and like I'm very observant of everything. I see everything because I build a case and like stack proof of like who you are. Mm -hmm. Like I have to fight to see the good in people and like fight for them because my brain will attack them Mm -hmm. and like get them away from me Mm -hmm. as like a protection thing. But it's not even like, I'm worried you're cheating. I'm worried about this. It's like, what if something happens to him? Like that shit like Uh, fucks me Interesting. It's like the awareness of how I see like safety and like how fast things can happen. It's like, The thought of something happening to Mm. him, getting robbed, getting shot, his house catching on fire, like getting in an accident. It's like all of these things hit, plus the cheating shit. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's not just, oh, I'm worried about you with other people. It's not insecurity. It's like just too much awareness of like what can happen. Mm -hmm. And it's like anything that could like threaten my connection to you or like losing you. It's the same way with my family and like anyone I'm friends with. It's like anyone to get close to me hurts Mm -hmm. until we have that like, because you, know you I mean? well, you've seen it. I think like the the stuff you've seen in your life with your stepdad and just other things too. It's like you've seen it, you know, to experience that. I I've never experienced something like that. So yeah, of course that's gonna be in the back of your head. Mm-hmm. And like how you get rid of that, I don't know. I mean, that is that's that's terrifying. I never even thought you've unlocked new fears for me because I never even think about that. But then it's like, yeah, I don't. That's why I don't talk about these things. Yeah, yeah, because because like, I don't want people to know. Right, I'm like, they start thinking about like, it. Like I'll sit here and be trapped with it. You be happy. Yeah. <laughs> you I you have to be aware of like. Definitely. Me, because like you're gonna notice changes in me and my behavior, and like you're gonna mm-hmm. know something's bothering me, and I want you to be aware it's not like something that you did. Yeah. So like I have to be like that with my friends and like everyone. Like being close to me is a challenge. Yeah. Like and it's not really a challenge, but like, you have to understand me. That's very hard. And how do you? Do you just explain it or they have to see it? Like for me, they had to go through episodes with me. It's almost like they had to like test them. I'm like, this is what happens. And they're either stick around or they don't. It's a little different. Mine's a little bit more like abusive, my mental illness. But yours is, do they see it and they just understand it? Or you like tell them ahead of time? I kind of have to explain it. And like if something bothers me, I'll talk about it and I'll Mm -hmm. say, this is why it bothers me. Mm -hmm. Or like this is why this thing like fucked with me. I'm not just being sensitive. I'm not like this and that. It's like this is what this means to me. Yeah. Well, I think you're good with communication, so I think that's, yeah. like, a big thing. Because I feel like when you don't communicate that, like, I was always really bad at that. I was like, this is just how I am. You're going to have to deal with it. But I think when you communicate it. But that's but- a big reason I've been single for so long because I know what I have to, like, take on to be with someone. Mm-hmm. And it's not like that forever. Like, it's just the first few months, like, year, it's hell. Mm-hmm. And then it's, like, it's so fucking good after that. Mm-hmm. But just, like, building that's a lot. But that's why I've been so single because, like, for me – Me being as busy as I am right now, I'm learning so many new ways to deal with this. And it doesn't really affect me half as bad as it used to. Because, like, I'm so fucking busy. I cannot be – like, I have to shut it off. Mm -hmm. And, like, this is what's going on. I don't have time to fight with my thoughts. Shut the fuck up. And, like, I have to do my podcast, do your podcast, do the meeting, do whatever it is, do my event. Yeah. It's like I've learned – Promote, social media, all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I've learned so many ways to do it and, like, get a better grip on it. It's always there. But, like, being so busy, it's, like, why I've been so single because I'm, like, I don't have time to deal with all of that. But it's, like, I have to deal with it. I'm not the one to run from expansion and, like, self-awareness. Like, I do it to, like, like, grow and learn because now I can teach people. Yeah, which is amazing at 25. Like, you just seem so much, like, older. Like, it's crazy. Like, I'm talking to you and I feel like you're older than me. Like, you're, like, in your (laughs) 40s, you know, knowing all this stuff like that. It's amazing. The self-awareness and all this stuff like that is just – Really great. And also just like also talking about how you also struggle with just like the all of it, the mental part of it, you know, the eating you still think about. Like knowing that you have that struggle still is like very human. Yeah. And very like, I don't know, again, not – it's very relatable because at first I look, I'm like, oh my God, I can't relate to this person at all. But then it's like, oh no, I have to deal with this every single day too. Yeah. And I think that's cool that you like talk about that. And I love that. I love the softer side of you. You're the first person who's like kind of asked. Really? Oh, wow. I'm surprised because I feel like – I guess because you're just such a – you're just such a – what's the word? Like you're just so prominent. You're just such like a figure that it's like people wouldn't think to 
there's something deeper to it. They're like, oh, this is you. This is just confidence and this yeah. and strapping and all of that. I wanted to talk to you so bad because I knew you'd like get it. Oh, totally. I get this more than ever because at first, because I, I always liked you. I liked you on TikTok and stuff like that. I liked you in your interviews because you're just so funny and like witty. And I was like, I love it. You're totally my like type of friend. You know what I mean? So it's just like, oh, I love this person. But then when, and you remind me so much of my friends that I have, like some I don't even talk to anymore, but just, I don't know. I just love everything about you and your energy. But like hearing this is like a whole different level. Like that you're a foodie and that you still think about food and that you struggle. And then like, the mental part, yeah. being in a relationship, uh, going through phones, all this stuff like that. It's like, oh my gosh, this is someone that I like. I relate to so much, which is like, it's so wild when you meet people like this. And this is what I love about social media is like meeting people that are, that you think are so different. I said this in my talk about mukbang. You'll see it. I did a little mukbang before this. I was like, this person is like so opposite of me. Like, you know, all this stuff like that, but we'll see how it goes. And then like, Knowing now we're so close, like it's great. Because I said I was like, you know what? Like he seems so opposite. He seems all this like this. And now seeing how similar we are, it's such a cool thing. Social media is so cool that way. Someone like just completely different. We grew up completely different. Just having so many similarities, and mm -hmm. I love it. I think Me it's too. cool. I like when you, I like what you said that too about the mukbang, like you know, binging and like there's other people going through it. And I think like that's what's cool about social media is because like. I didn't know people who were like borderline and like, you know, all this other stuff like that until social media. And you're like, oh, there's other people like me too. Yeah. Like a lot of people on social media, they always point out what you're doing wrong and how you're hurting people, mm -hmm. but they don't ever talk about, cause they don't see who you're helping. Like I talked about with the mm -hmm. binge eating thing. I mm -hmm. felt so powerless to it. Mm -hmm. And I felt like someone like was with me. Yeah. It's like, they don't, no one's going to talk about that. Yeah. But like you help a lot more people than you realize. And I have had to realize that with myself, mm -hmm. like just you and Brooke's episode talking about, like borderline and everything you guys feel and experience that helped a lot of people. And like, just hearing you guys openly talk about it, like helped me. Cause like I fit all, like I fit like seven of the nine characteristics of BPD. And my sister was nine out of nine, like a few wow. years ago. Wow. How she Before I started like going into like my shit. And it's crazy. Cause like, I didn't even know in 2019 when I was diagnosed, I didn't even know that existed. People always told me I was like bipolar, all this stuff. I was given mm -hmm. like lithium, I was all this stuff like that. And I was like, Oh, this is like a personality disorder. It's something completely different. Like, yeah. And people talking about it just, it just helps. And I think that's, what's so cool about like, I'm trying to get on it now because no one talked about it when I was like young, but you guys talking about it, you broke everybody talking about it. I think it's like so real. And it's just like something that I think people were so scared to talk about, you know, because it's looked at as like weakness sometimes, but now it's not, you know, people are like, oh, they look at you and they're like, oh, this person has it all together, but still struggles with it. Because I think everybody has a little bit of a mental struggle, you know, of some sort and they just don't either talk about it or want to share it. I think people have a weird misconception of like, sharing what they're going through, thinking that it'll make them look weak, but like mm -hmm. to do as much as we do and to be dealing with what we deal with and still doing it. That's so inspiring. Yeah. That's so like, holy shit. Like, it's like, it's not just you getting in front of a camera and being a happy dick. It's like right. me doing my event. It's like, I have so much more in my head and oh. like you have so much more you deal with mm -hmm. behind the scenes and you're still able to execute and like show up and do everything live is beautiful i bet your live events amazing being live and connecting with people in real life is nothing like it crazy i had the best times on tour as i think it's going to be like the best experience for people especially the way you talk and the way you like connect with people it's like it's gonna life change like for them you know they'll be and for you i think it'll be like such a such a powerful thing. That's so cool you're doing it. I'm so excited for you about it. It was a lot. Like, I loved it. But, like, I could, like, feel the shifts in mm. the room. Because, like, there are certain moments people would, like, cry because mm. I, like, said something that touched them. And then five minutes later, we're, like, laughing together. Yeah. And it's, like, I have a way of, like, maneuvering that. Oh, man. But hearing people, people feel safe. Yeah. Too. Well, of course. You have that. And that's the best gift is when people will feel safe enough to open up with you. But it can be overwhelming. I know when I did tour and people would like tell me their whole stories, oh my God, I would be like sobbing. You know, people show up with like cuts on their arms and stuff like that or like scar, you know, healing cuts and they're like, you know, it helped me. Like you just like, it's so much and it, but it's also so beautiful that they like yeah. can share that with you. I think it's like not everyone, not every influencer has that, you know, where everyone's just like opening up to them about everything. And I think that's what's so cool about what you do. I really do. And, and you're a cool guy. You're cool and you're young, which I think is like something people need to because it's like a whole different perspective talking about this. So I think that's really cool. I'm Thank excited. You. What's the, can you say anything that you've manifested that? Cause you're like, this shit works. Like I remember you said that in TikTok. You're like, this works. I wrote it down. It works. Like what's one thing that you manifest? Is it the tour? Is it? One thing from a long time ago, like I started a YouTube channel back in like 2017 and I like wanted to hit a hundred thousand subscribers so bad. And I like started the channel was posting for a couple of years, like until the end of nursing school. So I had like two years or I think it was like, 
three years. I was like, I can post, but as soon as I graduate, I'm deleting all of the videos and I'm deleting the channel mm -hmm. because I don't want to be like looked at weird when they try and search me when I started working at a hospital. Oh. So I like got so sad because I phys like I wrote down in journal that every day I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit that hundred thousand subscribers and I never hit it. Oh, wow. Graduation day came. I deleted it all and like was defeated. And then mm. years later, my podcast, I randomly start doing that. And then I'm like, I should do a video version, get on YouTube. Now I have 330 something wow. thousand. It's like, you don't know how it's going to happen, when it's going to mm -hmm. happen. But like, maybe it's not meant on this channel or in this way. But like a lot of things had to happen. It was years later before I hit it. But every fucking thing I wrote down came true. Wow. That's so cool. So that's what you you're just like have to follow it. Yeah. Just keep going with it, even if it's like you don't know the path it's going to go down. Like the most random ideas have come for me. Like I have followed the most stupid shit that led to nothing, but it bridged me to the next thing. Right. And like it gave me experience and knowledge to put towards something else. That is so how I feel in like life. Like you do one thing and it like fails and you're just like, why did that fail? And then it like leads you to something else. It is wild. I think about that all the time. It's crazy how that all happens. And that's why you got to like just trust it and just – have you ever seen the movie Yes Man? No. Oh my God. You have to have watch it. Wait, what? I don't watch movies. You don't watch movies ever? No, often. What does that mean? Oh my God. Do you watch TV? No. Oh my God. What do you do <laughs> at night? You just go out? Are you like a go out person? You go out a lot? I've stopped going out a lot. So what do you do at night if you're not going out? When you're single, like what did you do? Go to sleep. What? Like I work until I go to sleep a lot of nights. Are you watching like, TikTok? Like now I'll talk to like my guy or like just talk to my family or like watch TikToks or whatever. Like planned ideas, planned videos, planned podcasts. Oh and my shit. god, that's wild! Oh my god, that's crazy! Oh my god, I love movies and TV, so I don't know what I would do without them. That's crazy. Yes, man's good though. It's a Jim Carrey movie, and he says yes to everything. He can't say no to anything because that's like he goes like a Tony Robbins like thing, and he's like you have to say yes to everything, and it like leads him down this path. And I feel like that's very you. It's just like saying yeah. I, I try to say that. yes to everything now if I can. Oh, I say no to so much shit because like. <laughs> Going out, when I first moved here, I was going to everything oh. for, like, the first month. Girl. Oh, yeah. Going out, I'll say no every time. I'm just saying yes to opportunities, like, work opportunities. Yeah. But, like, you go to an event. You're like, oh, it's a work opportunity. And then, oh, let's go out. Oh, yeah, we're no. all drinking. And it's, like, it goes from, like, work to, like, party. Yeah. No. no. One thing everyone knows about me is, like, Tana, too, with a Halloween party everything. She's like, I'd ask you, but I know you're going to go. I just don't go out ever. I never went out even when I was 20. I don't know the last thing I've ever gone out of the house for. I'm just like, I don't go out, period. If it's dark, no. I'm staying in. <laughs> I do not. You Now it's getting dark early, so I'm just like, oh, I can't leave my house at four. Like, even going out in the rain this morning, when it was raining, I was like, oh, my God. I, like, went out by myself in the rain. Like, I just, it's very not me, so. <laughs> I love that you went and got Taco Bell and you had to, like, hide it. <laughs> well, but so I was worried about cute. you because I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I'm like, I can't tell him. I just want to talk about you. the smell of my breath, I thought. No, I love Taco Bell. Yeah, I've just been, like, I don't know. I've been on a fast food kick lately. It's kind of a weird thing. But anyways. <laughs> Um, so 2024, you have the tour. Do you ever see yourself acting? Because you're with a big agency now, which is crazy. Oh, that's and congratulations. something. That's thank you. That's, that's something huge. that they're trying to like push. Like I got a call the other day and was like, we need to start getting you in acting classes because <gasps> we want to start pitching you for stuff. And I'm like, okay. Will you do it? You can do it. Yeah. Oh my god, you would I be so want good. So badly to like get pitched onto Euphoria as like Nate's secret boyfriend. Oh, wow. Like, I'm fucking him. And he's, like, the big scary one of the show. And, like, everybody's scared of him. But, like, Loki, he's getting piped down by me. And then I come in as, like, the over-dominating character. Oh, my that God. But he, he is with. gay on the show. I've only seen two episodes. He's gay, no? <laughs> Isn't that episode we saw? He's, like, that... undercover Loki, but, like, is not. Okay. We saw only the first two episodes of season one, and then I stopped. But I thought he was having gay sex, I thought. I don't know. With His someone. Dad. Huh? <laughs> no, I think he was. I swear he was. Okay, I'm right. I don't no. know. But, no, he was. I just like, I would love to do something like that. And then, like, okay. okay. That'd like, be everything. To... Is it because you like Jacob Elordi? <laughs> do you think no. he's hot? <laughs> I always just think I want to be on shows because I think the person's hot. I'm just like, like I have the I weekend like right now. Huh? I like Maddie. Oh. I'm obsessed with her. Really? Wow. Yeah, she's my favorite. Okay, so would you do like, okay, but do you want to be his lover, not her lover? His, because I think it's just the gag. Right, just the gag. Like, what other think... guy is going to show up bigger? Than him around his age with my attitude that could like dominate him. Like, right. He's supposed to be the little crazy one, and then I hear I come in fee five oh five. And you're bigger. bigger than him too. Like, I just like the idea of it. Like I love the whole cast. Which one's Maddie? Is that is that Cindy Sweeney? The black hair hoops. She's like a cheerleader with her. Yeah. There's like two main girls, so it's like the brunette one. Okay, got it. 
I don't know. I need to watch this show. Why did I just say black hair hoops? Like black hair hoops. Like I, I knew what you meant. You said it because I think of TikTok. I'm like I only see scenes on TikTok, and I was like, okay, I know who that is. But we watched two episodes of it, and I was just like, oh, this is a lot. I don't know. But I can see you on that. It's shooting in like a year and a half, so you got time for it. You would be such a good actor. I think you have that like stature. It's like Jason Momoa. He gets cast and everything because he's just huge. You know what I mean? He gets to be in Game of Thrones. You would have been great in Game of Thrones. But I think you have that like it's like Vin Diesel. You just have that like look. You could be in, like, Prison Break. I feel like I couldn't. I'd have to be, like, The Rock. Like, the same fucking character in every movie. But then, or every that's, show. Yeah, but then you like, can. Like, I couldn't be other, anything other than me. No, I think you'd be good in, like, Dune. Like, all those, you know, you just have that, like, dystopian look. You know what I mean? I think Thank you'd be you. so good. That's great that they're doing. Oh, my gosh. See, I told you. Is that real? <laughs> oh, my God. Are you okay? <laughs> I wasn't kidding. <laughs> oh, no. I feel so bad. That's crazy. That's good, though, in one way. I'm like that, but I mean, I don't know where it comes from. I'm just jumpy in general. Moses could walk in, and I'm oh, just it like, It makes oh. me laugh every time, because it's you when the fucking dog ran out on the <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> I thought it was a rat. <laughs> see anything i'm like ah. i get jumpy too i mean in my house i know anywhere else i'd be so jumpy i always think someone's like around you know me in my car eating i'm like looking all the time i'm like who's coming around like i was doing it this morning i'm just very i get like, like that leo? <laughs> i feel safe with you though i'd be like oh yeah. don't worry about it we're good get him. yeah <laughs> what about your dad is he proud of you yeah he finally got a taste and like understood what i do because He, like, knew I was, like, doing shit online, never watched a podcast, never watched a TikTok, had no clue what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Like, fully just didn't see anything. And he came to my first event. And he, like, saw me and, like, he, like, came to tears. Like, he never cries. Wow. But he was, like, now, he's, like, I had no fucking idea. Because, like, he doesn't know, like, the side of me that's, like, in my podcast and, like, how deep I am and, like, how... I do shit and like Mm -hmm. how I touch people and like he had no idea that side of me existed because like we have kind of like a talk here and there relationship but like if he got a whole new appreciation for me wow and like saw it and was so proud and like I'm gonna go home and watch every fucking podcast wow you got 102 to catch up to Um, 102 (laughs) episodes how long have you done this for two years almost wow you don't number them Oh my god! Yeah, I was because I was like, trying to figure it out. I was like, I'm gonna count all these. Yeah. I think November fifth was two years. Wow! I missed it. Oh, you should have done an anniversary. Did you do a hundred episode be. celebration? No, oh. I did. Like I kind of like how we talked about manifestation mm-hmm. and shit. I talked about for my hundredth episode, like my biggest failures, and like how I overcame them, mm. and like all the actual back end of everything that. I've been through to get to where I am and all the shit that I failed at and like what I learned, how I got through it because I love hearing people talk about their failures. Yeah. Because like it's inspiring. But do you ever recognize too that like, okay, I was like a victim of stuff. Like I was a victim of like abuse. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I recognize I did not deserve that shit and I like have to like take care of the part Mm -hmm. of me that's like hopeless and like felt hurt. Mm -hmm. Like I have to take care of that. But I also like after I do that, I like extract every single thing I can about something bad that's happened and like use it like i make it useful Mm -hmm. like it wasn't my fault that it happened but like it did so what now yeah let's like capitalize off that shit every single thing i learned from it let's use it yeah and that's hard for people Mm -hmm. especially when they are the victim and there was something unfairness to them it's not fast yeah it takes takes a while while. do you think you're over it now like do you think you're healed from it as as much as can be or do you think you still deal with some stuff oh i absolutely still deal with stuff yeah every single day Mm -hmm. like with my stepdad he used to attack me a lot while I was sleeping. Mm. Like, would just start, sleeping. like, yeah. Because he was, he grew up, he kind of, like, went through, like, grew up in prison. But, like, you have to be ready at, like, the drop of a hat to, like, fight because people will fuck with you. He's like, I want you ready even when you're sleeping. Because, like, he was like that. Like, he could literally hear a noise and get up, like, ready to go, like, asleep. So, like, he would attack me a lot while I was sleeping and, like, <laughs> choke me out or, like, put a gun to my head or, like, oh put a knife to my gosh. throat. And, like get me like i'd wake up in a panic and like i still to this day like wake up like freaking out like a lot and like it's i usually when i sleep by myself i'm fine but like sleeping with someone whether it's a friend in the bed or like the guy i'm talking to like i'll if they move like my body has like that reflex of like like it freaks me out and it wakes me up and i like jolt out I mean, you did and I, like, it here. Lose my even. Breath. Yeah. Oh, like at when night. I'm sleeping. Wow. Yeah. But it's like when someone's in the bed. Yeah. It's like it's something I'm having to learn. Like I'm getting better at it. 
But like, that's something I still deal with. I mean, like, you never get over shit. That is, that's like, that's a traumatizing thing that I don't know how you, yeah, because that's like preparing you for what? For if you're in prison one day, like, that's like a weird preparation. I, I don't know. I don't know, girl. And now you can't sleep because of it, which is like, like, I sleep good, but like, I still do deal with like sometimes having that happen. And what would you do then when he would do that? Like, your stepdad, like, when he would come in your room, like, did you fight him or you just, I tried. <laughs> this is a wild. I can't even <laughs> comprehend. I don't even know the words to say because it is one of those things where I'm like, oh my gosh, how do you get over something like this? Because I don't. I think That's yours is thing. very unique. <laughs> like, there's a lot of things you just don't get over. Like certain heartbreaks, certain betrayals. You never fully like heal or move on. Mm-hmm. You never get over some things. Like even his death, I'll never get over. Yeah. Ever. Like I right. think about him all the time, every single day. Mm-hmm. It's not a painful thing, mm-hmm. but like I always think of him. Yeah. And certain people are like, oh, if you have any thought of it, you're not over it. It's like, who, whose definition of what? <laughs> but like healing, like I don't look at it like it's okay, it's done. Right. Like there's certain things you just don't heal from. It's just your whole life you're like going to deal with it. Yeah, I guess it gets it's better just, though. Yeah. I mean, that's good. That's the silver lining is that it does get better and like maybe over time it'll just heal itself. I don't know. Sometimes that happens with people. Rock bottom. Have you ever hit one? Plenty of times. Really? So you had multiple rock bottoms. Yeah. What would you say is one of them that really flipped your life around? Any that you can say or talk about? I mean, you're very open. I will give like, you so much credit. Losing my, not losing my nursing career, but having it pause. Because mm-hmm. like I went to nursing school to get out of like living with my dad and working with him. And I wanted, like I did, I put like three and a half years into school and I got it. And I was like working and I was like... I'm saving money. Like I'm making money. I'm, I'm good. I'm free. I can go. Mm-hmm. And then it's like everything happened and I ended up right back where I fought mm-hmm. so hard to get out of with no like way out. And that's when I turned to like car dealing. Stuff. Yeah. But like I always found another way out. But it wasn't as like – it wasn't like with the system. It wasn't like morally right to some people. Yeah. I don't give a fuck the system. <laughs> the system dropped me on my ass. So fuck you. I mean that's – But now I'm taxable and I'm good now. And now you're with like a huge management company. <laughs> you're doing this huge thing. It's wild, and it's and they're cool with you being open and just talking and stuff. Because like, I feel like when you get to this level too, they try to like dial you back a little bit. Like in general, people. Yeah, I'm have kind they of tried to? Into that. Yeah, but I did. They're want like, to... don't be so open. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, I get that. Honestly, I think it's refreshing, and I hope that you never lose it. But when you do get to this level and you're starting to make all this money and you have all these other people. I guess that's why I love not having a manager at sometimes because I'm like, oh, I could just say whatever. Also, it gets me in trouble. So I think it's a balance. But how are you dealing with it? I'm doing good. But like I've – I know when and when not to push it. Mm-hmm. But like I don't run anything by anyone. Like I'm the one who shoots, edits, uploads my podcast mm-hmm. every week. I don't By run, yourself. Yeah. I don't run the topic by anybody. I don't let anyone listen to it before. Like I've done it like this since the beginning and now wow. that everybody's got their hands in it, f- them. like it's me, my words, my everything. So they don't, they don't get any like input. They hear it when it launches and I'm like, like it makes me a little anxious now because I have mm-hmm. so much more to lose. Yeah. But like I know what I'm doing mm-hmm. and what I'm saying. Like I trust my own judgment so I feel safe with it. Yeah. That's a good thing to not but lose. I do s- step lightly. Yeah. Lighter. Uh, and when I stop, I know when I'm talking, I'm making a point. <laughs> you're about your topics and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, because your topics are all pretty much positive. Like, they're all feel good topics. Like, I don't listen to your podcast and think, like, these are bad. Like, there's nothing or anything bad in them. Thank you. I like them. Well, I'm so excited for you, your life, your podcast, your love. I think you're so interesting. As far as, like, open book go, oh my gosh, your life is wild. I think, I know you're in your self help books, but if you wrote, like, a book about your life, like, that would be the movie. And you could star in it. You could be your own star. I love you so much. I think everything I about you. you is amazing. I hope you don't lose your realness and your authentic authenticity because it's just so refreshing. Thank you. I like your I like your bluntness. I like your openness. I like your all of it. I like your delivery. You're just so perfect and I hope you never change. And I love that you don't apologize. I need to start adapting that. I'm gonna keep apologizing. Let me start but... calling me. Be like, next time you have a scandal, call me. Let's hope there's not a next time. I've been I'm Girl, problematic, we're both I think. Have one. We're both no, have no, one. we're not. I'm not do. manifesting that. I'm, I'm problematic. I love everybody, all the Never influencers. Mind, it's <laughs> <laughs> this is what I think. Is this one? Yeah. Kay. Knock on wood. <laughs> No, but, but like, literally call me. I'll tell you, like, like if you're wrong, me. I'll tell you. I'm the friend that will tell you. I know you, you will. Like, the fact that you already were like, girl, don't post that Starbucks. I was like, oh, my God, what's happening? Like, I really didn't know, but I'd love that you told me that. I was like, that. I'm looking out for you. I got yeah. you. Yeah. No, thank God. I, I don't know either. I don't know half these things, but 
I try nowadays. I just try not to like post anything or do anything. I just try mm. to be on the good side of everything because it's better to be unproblematic than problematic. Right. Be loved in this world. <laughs> <laughs> all right you guys thank you for watching uh check out leo it was probably sold out by the time it's out but if it's there's still tickets he's on the confidence unleashed tour but you said there's gonna be 30 more dates so yeah next year you can go international or you can just stick in the states we're planning on it <gasps> are you gonna go to albania oh no you can't well, i mean i could oh, but okay. like we'll see okay check him out everywhere on tiktok that's why i know. I, think I consider you a tiktok <laughs> star leo thank you skeppy who's not a leo he's a pisces Leo Skeppy, thank you for being here. What a great name. Thank You're you everything. Oh, and delicious and yummy. So okay. Good. I want to go sit down. Okay, Aster. <laughs> Let's go. Wait, where'd your friend go? <laughs> they left. <laughs>